In 2006, every time a cloud has appeared on the Mets' horizon, the skies have cleared precipitously. And so it is again today. The Mets getting great news about one of their ace pitchers as they get set to play an important series here at Shea Stadium. There haven't been too many of those with the Mets sporting a big lead. But the team with the second best record in the National League is in town. A bit banged up, but Scott Rowland and Albert Pujols and the St. Louis Cardinals have made their way to Shea for their only visit of the year. At Shea Stadium in New York, the New York Mets play the St. Louis Cardinals, also available in high definition. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Shea Stadium. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight. As the Mets and Cardinals open a three-game series, Mets were in St. Louis early in the year, lost two out of three. The Cardinals have been kind of stumbling along, but this is still the team that is certainly favored to be playing the Mets sometime in the postseason. Well, they've got a, what, a short lead, a real tight lead in their central division, and usually they're a team that's run away with that division. They're Pitching's been a little iffy this year, but they still got that big bat in Albert Pujols. And Pujols and Carlos Beltran square off in this series, and maybe it's an MVP showdown. Well, it's either one of the two here, and I think it, it's going to come down to, you know, it's, it's, uh, Beltran's been with a team that's running away with it. Well, he's he's contributed to that. Their numbers are pretty much the same, except that Pujols' average is much better. I think he's the best hitter in baseball today. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a stretch run, if there's a stretch run, in, in, in the Central Division, and Pujols gets hot, then it makes the decision kind of tough who's going to be the MVP. These are two most deserving players right here for the most valuable player. It's a shame that really only one is going to get the awards. And Beltran has a chance to rewrite the Mets record book as far as home runs and RBIs are concerned with a solid last quarter of the season. Tom Glavin pronounced good to go at least within the next seven to ten days that's good news for the New York Mets even better news is the way John Maine has been pitching lately and he gets another crack at it tonight well just think about it guys they had these auditions for 12 different pitchers all season long and John Maine won the race as he's just been outstanding since the all-star break his ERA is 1.57 that's the best in baseball and his motion and the way he's been able to surprise the hitters he gets away with more pitches in the middle part of the strike zone than really any pitcher I've seen in a long time he doesn't throw 98 miles an hour he only throws 92 but he's very deceptive with that long arm action and may will be opposed tonight by Jeff Weaver who began his year pitching miserably for the Angels and has been pitching pretty well for the Cardinals over his last three starts while the Mets held their breath for 48 hours now they can he exhale Tom Glavin's okay we'll hear from him in a beautiful day in New York. Blue skies, very low humidity. As the Mets come back from an off day to take on the St. Louis Cardinals tonight in the opener of a three game series. The day has already been awfully bright for the Mets with the news that Tom Glavin is going to be good to go. And Glavin went, met with the media before the game tonight. Going through a lot of the tests that I went through and the stuff that they can do now medically, I mean, it's just, it really is unbelievable, the technology they have and the things they can do. And, and like you say, in the end, it boils down to, you know, something as simple as taking a baby aspirin and, and getting on the medication that I've been on off and on for so many years because of the circulation of my other two fingers. So, you know, in the end, it seems like a, uh, a pretty simple solution for what turned out to be a whole bunch of elaborate tests. But... Uh, you know, fortunately, I guess uh, for me and, and for everybody involved, uh, a, a simple solution in the end was certainly the, the one we could have, best one we could have hoped for. Not that surgery ever comes at a good time, but it seemed like this was the worst of all times, you know. Um, for me personally, having a good year and obviously trying to get close to a, a personal milestone and for our team to play in the way that we're playing and, and being on a, a team that Hopefully, barring something crazy, is going to get into the postseason and want to experience all that again. Um, you know, I mean, those things go through your mind, and yeah, you're you're disappointed about the timing of it. But like I said, I don't, I don't know that there's ever a perfect time to have an injury and, and have to be faced with the uh, the possibility of having surgery. So yeah, I mean, you reflect on all that, and um, you know, it's the kind of thing that I guess as much as. I enjoy doing what I do and love doing what I do and like being around these guys every day. It, it makes you appreciate it maybe even a little bit more because, you know, even for a short time, even though I was kind of back and forth coming to the ballparks, you don't really you don't really feel like you're a part of things that are going on. And that wasn't a good feeling. But Tommy should be able to resume baseball activity in a couple of days and be back on the mound in seven to ten days. In fact, the Mets have not even placed him on the disabled list to make room for Guillermo Mota, who was here today and available in the Mets bullpen 
The Mets have optioned Royce Ring back to Norfolk. So it's the Mets and Cardinals opening a three game series tonight. That means Albert Pujols is in town. Carlos Delgado getting hot. And the Mets will try and outlast the Central Division leaders when we come back to Shea in a moment. Dodge. 42nd President of the United States, Bill Clinton, on hand here tonight to watch himself a ball game. Got himself a pretty nice seat right behind home plate. <laughs> he looks good. I think he just celebrated his 60th birthday. I know it's this month. Yes, and feeling well after all the, uh, the heart difficulty as we check out the Rico Cardinals lineup. Albert Pujols, 36 home runs, 98 runs batted in. But David Eckstein is missing. Jim Edmonds is missing. And those are uh, two very large personages out of the St. Louis lineup. John Mann, you can see that three and three record, though, has pitched so well since the All-Star break, just coming off that 26 inning scoreless streak. Aaron Miles filling in for Eckstein. Eckstein sitting out with a rib cage injury. He has not been placed on the disabled list, but probably should be because it doesn't look like Eckstein, who hasn't played since last Friday, is going to be able to play anytime soon. They said that it's going to be at least another week, and that's an optimistic viewpoint right there. So they may have to be yellow. And Maine falls behind Miles 3 0. Miles is a second baseman who's playing shortstop. In fact, tonight is only the seventh game in his career. That he's played it short. As you look at Chris Duncan on deck, and Miles takes a strike. John Main making his ninth start over his last five. He's three and zero oh with a 1.6 ERA. He's been that good. And a strike to Miles, three and two. Well, I think one of the main reasons for his success, Garrett Ron, is he goes after him with the fastballs. He's not afraid to throw his fastball. He's really a, I was at 80 75 percent of the time and working very quickly at the outset tonight maybe quicker than we've seen him. I think it is a little quicker but that's a good thing. I know the fielders love it don't they Keith when you work quick throw strikes and I know managers love when you're aggressive and go after hitters pitching coaches like Rick Peterson also. Three two to miles now back. Do you think about your pace when you're pitching? You do. Uh, I know sometimes you can get a little too quick because you're a little pumped up in the beginning of the game. Sometimes you have to slow yourself down, but sometimes in the middle of the game, you have to kind of pick it up a little bit because you get lethargic sometimes. Miles lifts one foul down the right field line, so Miles has seen eight pitches already in this opening at bat. Ah, DeWanner, he's back. Juan Sanchez has been around the Mets clubhouse this homestand wearing a sling on his injured right arm. Toward the middle Woodward on the backhand. One away. So one out and nobody on. And the New York Metropolitans Geico defense Delgado at first Woodward at second base again Valentin still that hamstring is tight. Tucker and Chavez in the corner outfield positions and that's been kind of the, the area where Willie's been trying to figure out right now. We got Millage he gets a little spot playing there. He's on the bench today. Here is Chris Duncan who's about the hottest hitter going in the big leagues the last two weeks. In fact he is the co National League player of the week. Son of the Cardinals pitching coach Dave Duncan. And he takes a strike. Well he's big like his dad. I remember him when he was a little little guy. 15 years ago, but boy, he can hit. Riding an eight game hitting streak right now and hitting over 500 during that stretch. Which Five. Give you an idea why he was player of the week. And he hit 583 for that stretch, had a slugging percentage of over 1,000. Two and two to Duncan. You have to remember when he was a young man, he used to take batting practice with Ken Seiko, McGuire, Lansford, all those cast of characters. All grown up now. Duncan pops it up. Playable for David Wright. And just not to trip over the bag and makes the grab two away. If you're a corner infielder on a play like that, are you conscious of where the bag is? You have time on a hot pop up that's up there to find First out. Baseman. If you're anywhere near that bag, you have time to look down and find out where it is. You can see here it's way up. You see him look down already. He knew where that bag was. He looked down for that reason. You have plenty of time to look down and back up again. So two out and nobody on which is exactly the way the Mets wanted in front of Albert Pujols. Pujols is having 
an excellent season but he has not been quite as dominant the last couple of months as he was early in the year before he hurt his oblique muscle and sat out on the disabled list for a few weeks. You see the Mets have held him in check recently and Maine is ahead of a moment too. Oh yes he hurt that oblique and he has been solid but certainly Albert Pujols in the beginning of the season we all talked about it he was on a pace to do things that had never been done before. And May comes right after him and strikes him out. Maine gets Pujols on three pitches. One two three Drew green lawn and land care presents the ground rules. New Yorkers love a good debate and Daily News Live will be the place to find one five days a week on Sportsnet New York. Nothing is off limits. All opinions are in play. The teams, the players, the issues that matter. Daily News Live weekdays at 5 p.m. on Sportsnet New York. Jeff Weaver today is celebrating his 30th birthday as he takes them out for the Cardinals against the Chevy Mets lineup. Weaver has been drilled in the past by Carlos Delgado. You see Tucker and Chavez, the corner outfielders tonight. Chris Woodward getting another start at second base. Jose Valentin could be back tomorrow. And Reyes takes ball one. Jeff Weaver, of course, at 5 and 13 with the Angels and here. With the St. Louis Cardinals. He's changed his arm angle a little though after coming with Dave Duncan, who is great at working with older pitchers trying to save their career. He's the best place at the right time for Weaver. Well, he's always been a sinker slider pitcher, and he's never really been anything but a 500 pitcher, if, if uh, or a sub 500 pitcher. He's always been a workhorse. Balls beyond Reyes, three and one. His, be, his best year was last year, 14 11 with the Dodgers. He really carried that Dodger pitching staff last year. But things fell apart for him in Orange County. And it's drilled toward the gap in left center. Dunk it over. Oh. Makes the diving catch. Chris Duncan, a big man. Laying himself out. The catcher. Well, my gosh, this is a heck of a catch here. That is just sprawled out, parallel to the ground. That is a fantastic play. That doesn't make that play. That's a triple for Reyes. It's a big hang with him, too. That has not happened very often this year, and it is a hang with him. When that ball was hit, it looked like there was no chance Duncan would catch it, but the ball sliced back toward him a little bit, which was the only thing that gave him a chance. That has to be your approach on a pitcher like Weaver who is a sinker ball pitcher and a left hand hitter is to take him into the left center field gap. Wait for that sinker away. One and one to Laduca. Laduca just six for his last 35. So he's cooled down after six or seven weeks when he was the hottest hitter in the league batting average wise. The lefties are hitting. 353 is looking at Carlos Beltran off of Weaver this year. 17 of his 26 home runs given up to left handers. Right at the second baseman, Billiard. And there are two away. So two out and nobody on. Well, you know, when you talk about Dave Duncan, you got to mention guys like Dave Stewart, Bobby Welch late in his career, Storm Davis, Mike Moore. I'll include myself in that group and I think that what he does better than anyone is he takes the macho out of your game early on in your career you strike out guys you can overpower guys at times but later in your career you have to give away those foolish things and become a pitcher and throw the ball to corners and change speeds all those things that you didn't have to always employ as a young pitcher. And sometimes that even works with pitchers who aren't necessarily at the back end of their careers. Look what he's done with Jason Marquis here since he's come to St. Louis. Two and one. Well, Dave Duncan, I think, played on those great Oakland A's teams in the 70s. And that, in my mind, were the best teams in baseball that I've, my generation, that I ever saw. And he was the defensive catcher. Gene Tennis was the offensive catcher. Hit hard right at Belliard, who likes to play deep. And it serves him well as he throws out. Beltron and it's a one two three inning for Weaver thanks to the performance of Chris Duncan out in left field robbing Reyes of an extra base hit. 
The Jets and Giants meet in their annual preseason clash, and Sportsnet New York has a special late-night encore of this Big Apple gridiron battle. Jets versus Giants, preseason encore, Friday at 11, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Second inning, no score. Scott Rowland leads off of the Cardinals and takes a fastball strike from John Main. Well, John Main's got to be careful with these three and four hitters in the Cardinal lineup because they're both good high ball hitters. And we know that Maine likes to throw upstairs with his fastball. He's probably wiser to come up and out of the strike zone a little bit like we struck out Pujols to end the, end the first inning. But these are Roland and Pujols are very good high ball hitters. 0 2 to Roland and he pops it up. And Delgado's right there. One away. So one out and nobody on. On Mets.com, you can now download the MLB.tv mosaic, and with it, you can watch up to six games simultaneously on one screen, including out of market Mets games. It's the highest quality video of live baseball you can watch on the internet. Check it out at Mets.com. One away, here's Juan Encarnacion pressed into service in center field right now with Jim Edmonds out with post concussion syndrome. There he is. Edmonds played a little bit defensively Saturday and Sunday, but still not ready to play full time yet. Is there something about John Maine that is helping him the first time people see him? Well, he throws a lot of fastballs up in the strike zone. When it gets around the league, the league will start to look down, which means. And Keith, you know this better than anyone, that you're going to try to find a ball out of his hand, anything above the waist or that, you're going to try to spit on it, try to take it. And he strikes out Encarnacion with a fastball. I mean, he just threw six out of seven pitches fastballs to roll in an Encarnacion, and they just can't reach it. The one thing he does have working for him, though, even up in the strike zone, and it might work in the future, the right he's just Number very three. deceptive. He's Preston one of those guys Wilson. that has this long, lazy windup. And the ball is on you and, he, and he, he go, he, hitters go how did I miss that how did I foul that back it was right there but he just has whatever that is that little extra at the end. Here's Preston Wilson playing his fourth game as a Cardinal let go by the Astros Cardinals had a need Mets passed on Preston and he signed with St. Louis. Hit a home run in his first game with the Cardinals. And the changeup misses one and one. Talk about guys with long, slow deliveries where the ball explodes. How about Mariano Rivera? Pop this way, foul, and it's one and two. Rivera, we had a good friend, Sid Fernando, so uh, came by to say hello. He's at the game tonight. No one had the slower windup than Sid Fernandez, and that ball jumped on you. And sweet Lou, number 20. Right at the second baseman, Woodward. Easy hop. And another one two three inning for John Main. He's retired the first six to face him. So Main off to a fast start on a gorgeous night in New York. Mets and Cardinals go to the bottom of the second. No score. When the clock hits zero on the Jets, Sportsnet New York is the place to go for Jets post game live. Immediately after every Jets game this season, SNY goes live with analysis and complete reaction from Ken Green. Jets post game live only on Sportsnet New York. Get to New York Sports here. Sunset in New York. As we go to the bottom of the second, Carlos Delgado leads off against Jeff Weaver, whom he has owned over the years. Delgado with great career numbers against Weaver, 17 for 35 with two home runs. And he throws one deep down the right field line toward the corner. For Delgado, it's career home run number 399. That ties him with Andres Galarraga and Al Kaline for 42nd on the all time list. And it's the 10th straight year now that Delgado has hit 30 or more home runs. 
And Wright hits one deep down the left field line. Hooking. Foul. Just foul. Oof. Well, Delgado, this is such a good sign right here that he's coming back. Remember now, he's hit a, it's the second home run in this homestand. He's a breaking ball and he's waiting. That is hitting up at the plate, letting the ball come to you. Something he hasn't been doing and he has been lately. So those are all positives. That's the fourth home run of the last five games for Delgado. Ten straight years of 30 home runs. That is magnificent consistency as Wright rolls over one to third. And Roland the Gold Glover throws him out, one away. Well, his next home run, the number 400, is going to be quite a milestone. Not too many guys with 400 home runs that can dance like that in the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Michael Tucker hitting sixth in the order. Tucker making his eighth start as a Met and he fouls it back. And uh, the news is coming down that the Sean Green to the Mets deal is just about done. Something that Omar Minaya has clearly been working on for the last week or so. And reports are that the deal is done. It's not been announced yet, if indeed it is. And Tucker has himself a base hit. Michael Tucker's done a nice job filling in since he was called up from Norfolk. This is what Sean Green has done this year. Now keep in mind that Sean Green is signed for next year at nine and a half million dollars. He has an option the following year at ten million dollars with a two million dollar buyout. And I think one of the keys to that deal is going to be, if indeed it comes down, how the money is structured, how much of that salary Arizona will pick up. I think that's the reason it hasn't happened earlier. It's just that they want to make sure the Mets make sure that they work out the financial difficulties of a deal and how much money is owed to Sean Green over the next two years. Well, it's a big gamble because Sean Green's numbers have been diminishing since his great years over in Toronto and got, came over to the Dodgers, been to Arizona. I mean 11 home runs in that ballpark with 51 RBI that is not productive. Yeah, that's a good hitters ballpark. Well Beltran was good friends with Delgado who came over here and certainly being behind him in the lineup helped him have the year he's having Delgado and Green are friends. They were friends in Toronto and Green had his best years. Maybe that will help Sean Green have a hot September. Well, you, I'm sorry Gary, go ahead. Chavez pops it up. And Roland has an easy play, two out. One thing it'll do, if you look at tonight's Met lineup, you're going to have Beltron, Delgado, right. They're not moving anywhere. They're, they're your three, four, and five hitters. Now you bring in Sean Green, a left hand hitter, to tuck him in the sixth hole behind right. That's left handed protection for right. And then Chavez is, and, and is going to probably get some diminished time. And it's going to, your bench is going to get stronger because now you filled that outfield void with the loss of Nady. As Woodward takes a strike. I think it's fair to say that Sean Green is not the same player that he was four or five years ago. I mean, he had 49 home runs one year with uh, with Toronto. He's not going to do that anymore. But he is a legitimate big league hitter. He's batting 283 this year. Molina throws in behind Tucker and he gets back. And they have a nice lineup in Arizona, but certainly not as strong as the Met lineup. So that has to help also. Well, it's not like Sean Green's over the hill. No, He's still no. in his prime. He could all of a sudden maybe find a happy home here and re find revitalization. You know what, though? I think it's a matter of adjusting expectations because there are a number of players, and we've seen a lot of them this year as Woodward fouls it back, who used to be home run hitters. Brian Giles, Luis Gonzalez, Sean Green, they're all in that in that category who are not going to be big home run hitters anymore. Well, it remains to be seen. Uh, it, in the sixth position, I mean, Sean Green hits his 300, and it's all about driving in runs. It doesn't matter how you drive men with home runs or doubles. It does not matter. And that's part of the adjustment in his game. It's adjustment in his game, and also he 
went to Los Angeles from Toronto with same, some of the same things that happened to Carlos Beltran. He's not the kind of guy that wants to be the number one guy. He'd rather fit in amongst the lineup. He certainly would have that here. And the breaking ball in for a call strike three. Woodward down looking. So Weaver works through the inning. But the Mets grab the lead on Carlos Delgado's 30th home run of the year. Career number 399 and it gets John Main a lead. Bring a group to Shea. Watch the Mets with family, friends, or community organizations. Choose ballpark seating or a hospitality option like the picnic area. For a full calendar of special events, including fundraisers, call 718-507-TIXX to book your group now. Convict. We go to the third inning here at Shea. Mets with a 1-0 lead. As we check out our subway around the major leagues, Tom Glavin back for the Mets. Big blow to the Phillies. Yeah. Aaron Rowan probably out for the rest of the regular season. Ron Belliard takes ball one. Boy, he and Utley look like two spinning tops as they collided on that play that always seems to get the second baseman or shortstop and the center fielder. Belliard pops it up. And Delgado in toward the mound, one away. So seven batters against John Main, and not a single one has hit the ball out of the infield. Fun at the ballpark. Oh, that's our producer's family there. Greg Picker, that's his kids. Those two kids, look at those two kids in those Met uniforms. The Pickers. Yadier Molina bounces one foul. They were up here in the booth. They were making a lot of noise. They're running around like two, like brats. <laughs> Dad had that no was, control that was, over them. That was Keith Hernandez <laughs> who said that. Dad had no number control seven, over those kids. Number 17. <laughs> <laughs> One and two to Molina. You realize that, that Greg has control over your microphone. He can just turn it right off now. <laughs> they turned me off. You know, you know what happened is Greg has had trouble concentrating on his parental skills because he's been trying to take care of us all <laughs> And Molina goes down swinging. Third strikeout for John Main, who is off to a scintillating start tonight. Again, that fastball up in the strike zone. They just cannot lay off it. Lazy arm action, four seamer. And that ball seems to, now they say physically that ball's not supposed to rise, but boy, it sure like it looks like it is. And they keep on chasing that ball up and out of the strike zone. Jeff Weaver, not a bad hitting pitcher. Lifetime 213 hitter. Wonder if Jeff's happy to be back in New York. This was not the scene of his oh. most memorable stretch. First round draft pick of the Tigers, who enjoyed a lot of success in Detroit before he came to the Yankees and it was not fun for him in the Bronx at all. Well, those well, were his early days emotionally where he was a hothead. Almost makes you forget about Eddie Lee Whitson. I mean, that's how bad of a time he had oh, over there. Boy, Whitson just had the most miserable time. Maine ahead of a one and two. And Weaver hits it right to Woodward. So Maine has been perfect through the first three innings, and the Cardinals have not hit a single ball out of the infield. The sun has been going down on the Cardinals over the first three innings of this one. Tomorrow, it's game two of Mets Cardinals as the Amazons battle it out with Albert Pujols, Jim Edmonds, and the Cards as their series continues at Shea. Mets, Cardinals, Norfolk Bank pregame live begins tomorrow at 6.30, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Well, you may have heard that this September, the WB11 is changing into the new CW11. So what does that mean to fans of the WB11 news? Well, the name of the station may be changing, but the CW11 will still be the place to find your favorite news shows in the morning and at night. John Main leads off the home third inning, looking for his first big league hit. Still got nearly a quarter of a season to play. But if John Main continues to pitch the way he has been pitching, and this is now, you know, we're talking about six, seven starts in a row, how can they possibly leave him out of a playoff rotation? Get your checkbook ready, John. If you pitch this way the whole rest of the way, you will be buying postseason tickets for friends and family. I mean, he will absolutely be on the on the roster and have 
an opportunity either to start or uh, pitch out of the bullpen. But I guess that's the question. You don't know what he's going to do out of the bullpen. You've seen what he's done as a starter. How can you leave him out of your rotation? Well, the bullpen's pretty set right now, isn't it? Is there any room for, for the bullpen? I mean, you got and three left-handers. Main goes down looking, one away. As you look at one of them right there, and Mr. Fel Feliciano. They had four lefties, but one was sent out today. Royce Ring, option back to Norfolk to make room for Guillermo Mota. Did you see Mota today in the clubhouse? He looks like he's about seven feet tall. <laughs> oh, he looks like he should be playing basketball. Well, it's a little iffy as to what he, he was having a terrible year. But we all know that he's got a golden arm. Mm -hmm. There's Reyes, who was robbed of an extra base in his first time up. A great catch in left center by Chris Duncan. It just seems to me that Omar Manaya has just been stocking up on pitching, 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 pitching. I can't, I can't uh, argue with him. Well, nice play by Chris Duncan. Have a guy that big hit home runs and make plays like that for left center field. Slap to short. Aaron Miles playing shallow. And throws out Reyes two away. So two out and nobody on. The catcher, Paul Loduka. Well, we're going to give you the Ford Cardinal defense. And you can see that they are a fine defensive team. The Cardinals are always good defense, defensive clubs. Belliard in the trade of, that came over from Cleveland. Aaron Miles playing in spot of the shortstop and instead of Eckstein, who's hurt. Of course, the gold glover, Scott Rowland, over there at third base. Just seems like the Cardinals are a team kind of patching things together. It's interesting you say that Keith patching things together talking about John Maine. Have you ever seen a first place team that's running away with their division going to have more questions to answer about their starting rotation in September than the New York Mets. Oh. It's a breaking ball strike. Well it could be that they'll have everybody healthy. I mean Lavin certainly got good news today. You expect to have Pedro back healthy. You throw El Duque and Traxel into that mix along with Maine and you're not going to use five starters in a playoff series. But you have to use four because the Mets have older starters and they're not the kind of pitchers that'll go on three days rest. You, know, you look at the Cardinals they might have struggled but they're winning their division but you have the carpenter factor. He's a guy that can start three times in a seven game series and beat you three times. And Leduca gets one past Rollins glove. And the Mets have their third hit off Weaver. Well, Leduca here hits, just turns on a sinker. He just one for ten in his home stand. That's his second hit now. Two for eleven. Right up at the plate. Good hitting on a sinker on the belt. He was so hot. I guess he was due to kind of hit a little dry spell. His belt trying to hit a hard ground ball to Belliard his first time up. Ooh. Now Delgado already has his home run tonight. On Sunday, Beltron and Delgado both homered in the same game. It was the eighth time this season they had homered in the same game. It probably wouldn't surprise you if I told you which is the only duo in Major League Baseball that's done it more. You know that one. That would be that pair in Boston, <laughs> Ortiz and Ramirez. Who seem to do it every game. The ones who didn't win a game against the Yankees this weekend. Five up, five down. Mm. Talk about destroying your season. Two and one to Beltron. Yankees, the last time they won five games in Fenway Park was in 1943. Well, they beat them every which way. 47 runs in the first four games, then two to one <laughs> in the last one. How can you do anything but limp out west if you're the Red Sox? Change up by Weaver, two and two. When that series began, the Red Sox could have finished anywhere from three and a half in front to six and a half behind. Well, worst case scenario. Oh, the wipeout. <laughs> and they're now four games back in the wild card. So they could be left home very easily this October. Well, you're getting on that team bus to fly out west. You got your sunglasses on, hat on. You don't want anyone to notice who you are. 
and the fans yesterday afternoon at Fenway just slunk out. <laughs> Two and two to Beltron. Up the middle, but that's where Miles is playing, and he takes it to the bag to end the inning. One hit and one left, still one nothing New York. Get off the couch and into an even more comfortable seat at Shea. Sunday, August 27th is Mets Seat Cushion Day, presented by Lincoln Mercury. For your printed home tickets to see the Mets host the Phillies, go to Mets.com. Whenever there's a Mets game on Sportsman in New York, it's Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Last night, El Duque became the third Mets pitcher to steal third base. Who were the other two? Well, if the folks get the one that we know, <laughs> I'll be amazed. Well, to tell you the truth, the other two are both yeah. stunning when you think about it. One is extremely stunning. Yeah, I guess. El Duque <laughs> was stunning enough. <laughs> I mean, the Mets have had some athletic pitchers over the years, like this guy. Darling, he could steal the base. <laughs> Up the middle, and there's the first hit of the game off John Maine, off the bat of Aaron Miles. Maine had retired nine in a row to begin the game. I'm embarrassed. I never stole third in my entire career. I mean, Doc Gooden. I mean, there have been a number of Mets pitchers Jeter, over the years who Chris had the Duncan. athleticism to steal bases. But the two, plus El Duque, <laughs> who actually did steal third base, it's stunning. Yes. They had someone had to be asleep. I bet it was a day game. <laughs> <laughs> and Duncan rips one down the line. That's an extra base hit. Chased to the corner by Chavez. Miles digging for third and being stopped by Jose Okendo. And the Cardinals have runners at second and third and nobody out. Well, the eighth double for Duncan. Oh, fastball, outer half, mid thigh. The now, maybe there's a difference in that pitch when you make him get it down and then up. Sid was very much that way, Ronnie. Ball down becomes straight, which is almost the opposite of any other pitcher. Ball upstairs has life. So here's Pujols. You got first base open, but nobody out in a one run game. Metz will play the infield back and can see to run on a grounder. And Pujols lifts it foul. Main struck him out on three pitches his first time up. You see what Pujols has done lately with runners in scoring position, not what you'd expect. Pretty good for the season, though. 396. And he hits it to deep right center field. Forget it. What a shot by Pujols to the opposite field. A three run homer, his 37th of the year. And just like that, the Cardinals go up three to one. Well, Maine retired the first nine in order, but it took just five pitches here in the fourth inning for him to get belted for three runs. Well, I said that Pujols and Roland are good high ball hitters. Look at the level swing. And that's another ball that was in the strike zone, wasn't out of the strike zone. And boy, he is so solid and compact and so strong. That's his 101st RBI of the season. But we're going to look right here. Look at the no wasted motion. Look at that. Oh, that is just beautiful. He is so powerful. Look at his arms. He's very, very strong man. And the breaking ball misses to Roland. So after the first time through the batting order, nobody was able to center the ball. All of a sudden, the second time through, the Cardinals are getting great swings. It's a combination of two things. One is that they've seen him at one at bat, and secondly, you don't. You got to believe their hitting instructor came over to them and said, hey, listen, this kid is not fooling around. He is going to throw you a fastball on the first pitch. You'd be ready as soon as you get in the box. Back to back breaking balls here from Maine. And now he goes back to the fastball and Roland fouls it off. Well, it's always an important thing right now too, Ron. When you watch a young pitcher, this is the beginning where everything could fall apart on him and see how he reacts and if he can come back and stop the bleeding. Get out of this inning with just three runs. 
the eighth home run Maine has allowed this season. And it was 430 feet to the opposite field. Listen, you know you have power as a right-handed hitter. Is a left-handed pole hitter with power, if they hit that shot, that would have been a bomb. That's a right-handed hitter hitting that ball off the scoreboard in right center. Piazza-esque. Yes. Speaking of which, did you notice that Piazza, since his two home run game here, has not had a hit? 0 for 24, I believe. Longest drought of his career. It's a funny game. And Roland pulls it down to right. He idolized Roland as a kid and now throws him out, one away. Keith, you made a great this point. Is that is, is when Juan and you get give up those runs so quickly after you've been cruising. You know, at one point you're thinking, boy, I got nine up and nine down. This might be one of those special days. And next thing you know, they got three on the board. You really have to. Sometimes a catcher like Laduca can help you, a pitch coach can help you, but the bottom line is you got to help yourself. You got to calm down out there and you got to hold it at this number, give your team a chance to come back. That number got crooked in a big hurry. One and one to Ed Carnacion, who struck out his first time up. Well, a little bit of an uppercut on this swing, and that swings right through the high fastball. That's where he needs to be, Ron, right there. That pitch that starts out at the letters and goes and rides up. This, this fastball will start right about here, and it'll take off. And that's out, out of the strike zone. Has a little hump on it. That's where he's got to be. Same pitch right there, out of the strike zone. David Johnson used to have a, a thing you would say to me and other pitchers. See, just because a guy's a high ball hitter or a low ball hitter, that doesn't mean you don't throw it there. Just if he's a low ball hitter, throw it a little lower. If he's a high ball hitter, throw it a little higher because they want to swing at that pitch. Because as yet, they have not laid off it at all. A slider hit to short. And Reyes throws out Encarnacion two down. So two out of nobody on here is Preston right Wilson. Hitter, Preston Wilson. Preston is the only hitter in the Cardinals lineup tonight who has actually faced John Main before. Faced him with the Astros earlier this year. Off the end of the bat. It was a little surprising to see Preston Wilson released by Houston. He was sitting second on their team and runs batted in, but Jason Lane had come up and taken his spot. Well, we talked about it all the time, haven't we? We've shown these scouts that check out opposing players on opposing teams. And I think that when a guy becomes available, Omar and his staff gets together with those people that have been watching them play. And they all get together, huddle together, and figure out if this guy can still play or not. And they came up with a no answer for Preston, I would have to believe. I heard one of the, the nicest quotes out of Brad Ausmus, who was Preston's teammate in Houston, who said the two or three weeks after Preston lost his job and was sitting on the bench, he proved to be the most professional player he had ever seen in terms of his attitude. Woodward under it, and Wilson retired to end the inning. Well, John Maine had himself three perfect innings, but it all came apart quickly as Albert Pujols crushed his 37th home run of the year, and it's 3-1 St. Louis as we go to the bottom of the fourth. I'm Brian Custer coming up later on Geico Sports tonight. Good news on Tom Glavin. We'll have all the details, plus the Yankees take their hit parade to the West Coast. Check out Geico Sports Night every night at 6, 10, and 1 a.m. Jeff Weaver now with a two run lead as Carlos Delgado leads off the bottom of the fourth. First time up, Delgado delivered tonight's Coors Light cold blast. Well, he got himself a breaking ball, and that is a good sign when Delgado, anybody's in a, been in a slump, and he's been breaking out, and I think he's out. When they hit an off speed breaking ball and wait, and hit a home run like that. That is a always a very favorable sign that you're getting your act back together. Into the shift by Pujols, booted by Belliard and Delgado board. Well, they had half the team on that side of the infield, but nobody could catch the ball. And Delgado's on base. 
Well, I don't know how they're going to rule this. An E4? I would think. Yes. I mean, got to be. Pujols couldn't quite reach it. You know, Belliard's a guy who plays deep anyway. Yeah. Right. So he's comfortable fielding the ball on the outfield grass. He just didn't field that one. I, I, I agree with you guys. That's an error. But you also are assuming that that long throw from the outfield is going to be perfect to the pitcher covering the bag. That's not that's a tough assumption. That would have been a tough play that throw from Belliard to Weaver. So the Mets have a leadoff base runner tying run at the plate for David Wright. To center field sinking and Carnacion gets there. One away. So one out and one on. And let's bring back the duck and answer the Aflac trivia question. The other two Met pitchers before El Duque to steal third base. Now who would have guessed that. Who would have guessed Sid. And Sid's in the ballpark tonight. He didn't leave. You know, Sid he's was, still here. Sid was not fast. Sid how'd you do that. Come over here in the booth and tell us. And Hershiser <laughs> was like 40 years old when he pitched for the Mets. And Sid later scored. I think he scored the next pitch was the pass ball. Everything went right for us in 86. <laughs> <laughs> it was early in the season. He had his legs. <laughs> Here's Tucker. He takes the ball one. Tucker had a base hit his first time up. <laughs> Two and zero. Oh. Andy Chavez hitting seventh in the order tonight. Three and oh. Weaver generally has very good control, averaging less than two and a half walks per nine innings. What hurts him is the home run ball, and he's already given up one tonight, the 27th he's allowed. Tucker takes a strike. It's the home run ball, and he also has been prone to have some bad body language out on the mound where he will show up a, a teammate if he makes an error. He will get down on himself and stalk around the mound, and that's not always the winning way. 3 1 to Tucker. There's ball four, and the Mets have the tying runs on base. First walk given up by Weaver. From now until September 15th, Sportsnet New York and Budweiser are teaming up for Mets live on SNY viewing parties across the New York metropolitan area. Come on down for a shot at giveaways and a chance at free Mets tickets for a complete listing of dates and locations. Visit SNY.TV today. So an error and a walk put two men on for Andy Chavez. Andy popped up his first time up. Do make the deal for Sean Green. Certainly, Andy Chavez's playing time is going to be affected. The one unknown right now in the Mets' corner outfield situation is the health of Cliff Floyd. Now, Cliff is still down in Port St. Louis. He had to leave to go back to Chicago because his sister passed away a few days ago. But he does not appear to be very close to making a return. Hit to right field. Right off the end of the bat to Wilson, and that's the second out. So two away, and it's left to Chris Woodward. And I think also, Gary, uh, you're talking about Cliff. Second baseman, Chris Woodward. I think this is also why now, thus, we have this talk of this trade with Arizona for Sean Green. Because if Cliff was going to be coming back healthy, they wouldn't consider, I, I don't think they would consider the trade. And at least his, his status is enough of an unknown that you have to make some kind of deal because well if somebody's not in the organization by the end of August they're not eligible for postseason play so you've only got nine days. Here's Woodward with two out and two on it takes a slider outside. If Pedro Martinez's health was as unknown as Cliff Floyd's is you wouldn't be talking about green you'd be talking about a starting pitching or a starting pitcher that when was going after so you can tell that they're worried about Cliff and his foot. 
Mm. There's a strike one and one. The interesting thing about it is that before they knew that Glavin was going to be okay, Omar was not talking about going outside the organization. He feels he has enough depth here with Brian Bannister and Oliver Perez and, and Mike Pelfrey and even Philip Umber perhaps being part of the mix if necessary. Two and one to Woodward. That's one thing the Mets have done a very good job of is stockpiling pitchers. The Mets organization, when they have had good teams, they've always stockpiled on pitching from the 69 team to the 73 team to the 86 or the 80s teams. On two and one, Woodward with a check swing bouncer right back to Weaver. And that gets him through the inning. So Weaver able to work around an error and a walk. And he keeps himself a two run lead going to the fifth. Take the train to the game. Mass Transit's your best way to Shea. Seven Subway, Long Island Railroad, Woodside Connection. Connections to Metro North and New Jersey Transit. Mass Transit is easier and faster. Get on board at Mets.com. Setting at Shea as we check out the Jeep upcoming schedule. Two more games to go with the Cardinals in this series the next two nights before the Phillies come here for the weekend. From 1969 when the divisional format began through 1993. Ron Belliard leads off the fifth inning with a base hit. For that period of time, the Mets and Cardinals were in the same division in the National League East and faced each other 18 times a year, but things have changed now, and these teams only face each other six or seven times a year. And it's a shame because there was such a great rivalry between the Mets and the Cardinals for a while there. Well, for a long time, it was the Mets beating up on the. Uh, sorry the Cardinals beating up on the Mets but in the 80s uh, the Mets Cardinals just they had a totally different team than our team they had great defense we had good defense they had solid pitching we had really good pitching but their speed against our power kind of right Keith absolutely um, I think they had a much better defensive club than ours and played much more I think sounder fundamentals and more discipline but they relied on their speed and that AstroTurf field the big ballpark. And they, Whitey Herzog tailored those teams around Willie McGee's, the Ozzie Smiths, the Vince Coleman's, and you put a Jack Clark in there, and the power in the middle of it was pretty formidable. Olina well, takes the breaking ball for a strike. Joaquin Andohar and uh, John Tudor and Danny Cox were pr pretty good one, two, three yeah. starters right there. Ricky Matthews, I think, was one of their fourth or fifth stars for a while. Joe McGrain a little later. Joe Migraine. <laughs> <laughs> Molina drills one to deep left field. Tucker won't get to this one, and it hops up against the fence. Delyard being waved around third. Here's the relay throw to the plate by Reyes, who took the pitch slip, makes the tag, got him! What a pickup by Paul Loduca, and Delyard is out. Unbelievable. Well, we're talking about cardinal fundamentals. Well, the Mets also do at this ball club. Look at this. Not the strongest it throws in, but most important, it's the cutoff, man. What a play by Laduca. This is a short hop and then make the tag. Reyes, of course, with the cannon. That is just one fine play by Paul Laduca. Infield in for Weaver, who fouls it off. Double for Molina. He takes third on the throw. And they'll see if he got him right here. This is the good angle. Yes, he did. What a play. Put the hand right into the tag. Joe West, of course, with a great call, but just those gloves are not made to pick up the ball like that. Not only to pick it up, but quickly make the tag. Weaver breaks his bat. Well, here it is again. You're going to see. Nice play on the pickup. Ronnie's right about the glove. Look at that. That just says it all right there. Uh, we have seen Loduca involved in a number of plays this year where he's had to make difficult pickups somewhere he's made outs without even having the ball. There's a third strike to Weaver, and that's two men down. So Maine needing a strikeout gets one his fourth of the night. Well, good 
curveball from John Main, a pitch that we have not seen him use that often. And I think against this Cardinal team that's looking for the fastball, he should employ that more and more throughout this game. I think as he goes second time through the league, too, as Rick Peterson goes out to the mound, that he's going to have to throw more curveballs, start mixing it up, Ronnie. Well, Miles last time up got things started for the Cardinals by singling up the middle. Now, Main about to start his third time through the batting order. Delyard checking to make sure he has all his dip digits. <laughs> I mean, I it's it's still incomprehensible to me that guys dive headfirst in a home plate. I mean, in this case, he didn't go into a shin guard, but only bad things can happen. Well, it's more of a country club. But he hurt his finger there. Let's see. It probably jammed his look like his pinky. More like a fall than a slide. Those shin guards of a catcher can separate more shoulders or jam more knees. Well, they went to put those fingers into the plate and he ran into a, a leather road mm -hmm. block. That's what happened. That's just, that's just an unbelievable play by Leduca. Well, those are the things that win and lose your ball games. Your basic fundies gear. I love that word. I know that's why I got <laughs> throw it in there. Fun, I threw it in but, for your sake. But, but a catcher is not taught to make a backhand pick like a, a shortstop. That's that's an extraordinary fundy. That is well. That's <laughs> beyond. That's funding. an extraordinary play. <laughs> and now main behind Miles three and zero. Oh. Chris Duncan, who's been red hot, waiting on deck. 3 1 St. Louis and Maine trying to keep it there. He's already been helped out by his defense this inning. He throws a strike to Miles. Miles draws a walk. That's the first of the night issued by John Maine. He's only been averaging about two and a half walks per nine innings. So now runners at first and third for Duncan. Now if you're left, you're any kind of hitter, right, left Duncan. or right, and you got Albert Pulhos behind you. First and third. He can't, doesn't want to walk because it walk because it loads the bases and he has to pitch to Albert. This is around as great a protection as you can ever get <laughs> and, uh, at a, a, in an at bat in a game. Duncan ripped a double down the right field line his last time up. Now is a nine game hitting streak going and hitting over 500. Molina at third, Miles at first and two out. And Maine bounces the breaking ball and it's 2 0. Oh. Well, well, well. This is a very fine pitch to hit. Well, after the first pitch fastball miss, comes back with the changeup. Nice play by LaDuca to keep it in front. But this is one of those places for a young pitcher. What do you do? Trying to figure out what you can get over to try to get an out. He goes right back to his bread and butter, and Duncan fouls it off. And you saw Laduca call inside fastball behind the count. I like Laduca's very aggressive. And as a hitter, Lou Brock always told me, know your catchers too. Get a feel for what Laduca is. Obviously, a very aggressive catcher. He's calling in again. The main misses, and now it's three and one. That's pretty impressive that he's been able to bounce back when behind 2 and 0. Oh. But he walks Duncan to fill the bases for Pujols. Well, you couldn't ask for more trouble. Back to back walks to Miles and Duncan after Leduca's fabulous defensive play put him in a position to get through the inning. Well, there's nowhere to hide right now. This is going to be a very interesting at bat. Well, Pujols hit the home run to right center field. If you're going to get him out, if you're attempting to get him out, you have to pitch inside and try to top tie him up. Now, that's a dangerous place with the bases loaded, but you cannot just live by throwing fastballs in the outside corner. He's too strong. Pull holes. Three, six, three, three, sixty, ninety six of runs in scoring position. His ball one. Gary, three ninety six with runners in scoring position, three sixty seven with two outs. Ouch. That's clutch. Maybe the best hitter in all of baseball, and he takes a slider for a strike. Nobody's ever had 
five years to begin their career the way Pujols has. It's a deep left field. Back goes Tucker looking up and it's out of here. A grand slam for Pujols. Seven on the eyes of the last two innings for Albert. Seven to one St. Louis. This game shaped up as an MVP showdown. Albert has laid all his cards <laughs> on the table. Wow. Number 38, he now has 105 runs batted in. So he's saying if Albert Pujols is playing Texas Hold'em, he's all in. Whoa. Guillermo Moda just donning a Mets uniform for the first time, already up in the bullpen. As Roland fouls one off. Well, here's the pitch. It's a slider, not in a bad spot. It wasn't a great breaker, Ron. It looked like it was just kind of a spinner. Well, not only was it a spinner, but it was the second slider in a row he threw. He backed up a slider with another slider, and hard to fool a hitter like that twice. Roland fouls one back. Look at this. Right up at the plate. Very impressive. Wow, what a game. Albert Pujols has now had 56 career at bats at Shea Stadium and hit seven home runs. Seven homers and 56 at bats in this ballpark. Breaking ball in there for a call strike three. Rolling down, the inning is over, but. Albert Pujols has claimed this stadium as his own. Three run homer in the fourth, and now a grand slam in the fifth. 7 1 St. Louis. I'm Matt Yaloff with your Chevrolet Baseball Night in New York update. White Sox and Tigers. Marcus Timms deep the other way to right center field. Carlos Guillen comes in. It's a triple for Timms, and Detroit is up 3 0 in the fifth. Back to Gary and the guys at Chef. All right, Matt Ricky Lede will bat for John Maine. Maine's night got crushed with two swings of Albert Pujols' bat. Lede is still trying to find himself as a Met. Just one for 15. Well, Main thought he might bat. No. <laughs> no that, he came from Baltimore. It's not in the used to. You can stay in the game when you're behind like that, but certainly not in the National League. Well, Willie Randolph, right now, we're in, in the fifth, bottom of the fifth. Obviously, you're down six runs. You've got to get your ball club back in the ball game or attempt to. Two and two to the day. Well, the seven RBIs for Pujols, the first time he's ever done that in his brilliant career. Kind of impressed with Weaver, Ron. Looks like Duncan has got him on the right track now. He's been pitching good. He's got a good little tight slider to go to keep the left hand hitters honest. And he walks Lede leading off. Well, that's the last thing you want to do with a seven to one lead. And a struggling hitter at the plate. You walk Lede leading off. The short so the Mets will try and fight back with Reyes, who is lined out to left and grounded to short. Nothing in one to Reyes. You know, Keith, you were talking about uh, Jeff Weaver. Now, you like his light, tight little slider. Duncan's all, already changed him, too. He used to have a very pronounced core swivel that his, his number on the back of his jersey would almost face the hitter before he would come back and release the ball. He's taken that away. He's made it more traditional, kept his shoulders kind of locked in, especially his front shoulder. He's more of a traditional pitcher now. He used to take forever to let ball, to get, get rid of the ball to the plate. His dunk. He was more herky jerky too, wasn't yes, he? Ronnie? Absolutely. And if you've seen his brother, yeah. I mean Jared Weaver, who has been just phenomenal for the Angels, 
he's all arms and legs and twists and turns like Louis Tiant uh, the 6 6 version of of them but uh, and that's one of the reasons he is so successful his younger brother gets away from Molina and over to second goes Lede. Well this is a pass ball here and lack of concentration just missed it and Molina is a fine defensive catcher. So now runner in scoring position three and one to Reyes as the Mets try to build something it is a pass ball. Managers and pitchers coaches don't get too far from each other during the course of the game. Reyes pops it up. Miles retreating. Got turned around. Gets way and took and drops it. The day will stay at second. Reyes safe at first. Now that one had trouble written all over it from the time it went up. Well, Duncan does the right thing. It's his ball. And he does call off Miles. And Miles doesn't get out of the way. Obviously distracted Duncan here. And that pass ball now is very important in this inning because. He might have got the his recovery time on Miles was real quick. The runner on first, he would have had the force out. Well, Weaver was able to work around a leadoff error in the last inning. Now the Cardinals commit their second error of the game. Two aboard, nobody out from a Duke, and he tries to drop down a bunt with Roland playing deep. But he fouled it off. Duke has grounded out and single to left, one for two. So let's see how Weaver handles the adversity here. And Loduca punches a base into the right. Lede has to hold up to make sure it wouldn't be caught, so he'll stop at third. And the Mets have the bases loaded. Nobody out in the heart of the batting order coming up. A chance to get right back in this game. Well, good hitting by LaDuca. That is a pitch right down the inner half. And he opts to go inside out a little bit the other way. He's so good at that, and that is just such good hitting. You know, it's amazing. He can go line to line. His last at bat, he had an inside fastball, and he pulled it down the left field line. So he can take that pitch and go either way. So Dave Duncan will come out to try to settle down Jeff Weaver who's already had in some ways an extraordinary season. I mean here's a guy who went three and ten with the Angels to start the year after a pretty good season last year and then had the strangest day of his life in June when he was designated for assignment to make room on the roster for his younger brother. <laughs> Talk about mixed emotion. But then lands here in St. Louis had a couple of rough outings but has been very well lately and now handed a big lead trying to hang on to it. We were talking about it before I think he landed at the right time at the right place. Dave Duncan is the kind of pitching coach who doesn't mince words. He will tell you exactly what your strengths and weaknesses are and you st you start right away working on those strengths. John Main hoping the Mets can get him off the hook as Randy Flores goes to work in the Cardinals bullpen. Bases loaded, nobody out. Beltron 0 for 2 on the night. Mets down by six, but they're poised to try and get it back. 1 0 to Beltron. Lede is at third, he walked. Reyes at second, he reached on an error. Loduca at first, he singled. Beltron with seven career grand slams. And he chases. A fastball away, one and one. And you're right about that, Gary. It was a lot of strike. And that's the difference between now. Yeah, it happens. You all swing at bad pitches. Instead of a two and oh, it's one and one. I'm sure Carlos is mad at himself. A huge pitch here, though, in the up bat. Uh, one and one, Beltron watches it on the outside corner, one and two. Well, a good fastball from Weaver right on the corner. Got the call from home plate umpire James Howe. Hoy. So now Carlos finds himself in a hole. Trying to make something happen on one and two, and he pulls it foul. Well, 
Trot has three grand slams this season, three of the eight the Mets have hit, which matches a club record. Back to Weaver, he'll come home underhand to get an out. You throw it overhand, he might have a chance for a double play, but he settled for just the one out. Never ceases to amaze me that the guys that make a living throwing pitches for strikes cannot make a simple athletic throw as he does the underhand toss to catch a Molina. My goodness, what was he thinking with Delgado in the on deck circle? So here's Delgado. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez, Chris Cotter with you from Shea Stadium. Mets find themselves in a 7-1 to one hole thanks to two Albert Pujols bombs. Carlos Delgado has accounted for the Mets' only run with a home run, and he's got the bases loaded with one out. And Weaver leans him back. Delgado hitting nearly 500 for his career against Weaver, including his home run tonight, his third against Weaver. Reyes, Leduca, and Beltran, the base runners. The infield over shifted to the right. And Carlos lays off to strike one and one. One thing that Weaver has done here to left hand hitters, Gary, when he's in trouble, Ron, he throws that little cutter, that slider inside. He, he pitches inside to establish the at bat in and then goes, runs that sinker away. Two straight pitches, sliders to Delgado in. Keeps it in on him, two and one. Well, that's a great point, Keith, because you can't do it the other way. You cannot go outside and get a strike away unless you've done something inside. That way, if you do some pitching inside that he has here, if you make a mistake outside, you might get away with it. You might follow it back. Delgado tonight has his 30th home run of the year, the 399th of his career. Slider misses low. Boy, how sweet would number 400 be as a grand slam? That'd been, that would be an easy one to remember. Now, as a hitter here, you can sit on the fastball on the outer half with a middle away or middle in. With Delgado's case, as a power hitter, he might sit middle in. Time call. Weaver was about to start his motion. Well, kids are ready to go back to school, aren't they, pretty quick? Not yet, they say. Not <laughs> yet. Got plenty of time. Three and one to Delgado. And he goes with a deep right. That's gone. What a blast by Delgado. A grand slam. His 400th career home run. Delgado's 400th career home run is 11th career Grand Slam and for the Mets their ninth Grand Slam of the year that's a new club record and it gets them right back in the ballgame. Slider run. Well, that is a bad pitch to have to throw a pitcher's thinking I need to get me over breaking ball because I'm behind in the count. And down and in to a home run hitter from the left side. Well, you get high fives when that happens. Well, this club has not quit. That's why they have the record they have and have run away with this division. Well, 
so far tonight it's been a mono on mono between two big sluggers pool holes and Delgado look at him hit right up at the plate no no motion forward and I have to say Mr. Delgado is out and back in the groove and Weaver strikes out right for the second out now one thing I find Ronnie we were talking about Weaver pitching inside yeah. to lefties the left and we're going to watch it again Michael look at this Tucker. straight up and down that was beautiful he doesn't have a fastball to come inside to lefties it's got to be his breaking ball now when you just, when you have to throw a breaking ball to come inside you can make him you're more you can make a mistake with it like he did there leave that over the plate you're more inclined to make a mistake with a breaking ball than the fastball with Michael Tucker and he lays off the strike the breaking ball is also always going to have a little tilt on it so it's going to be working down and into left handers that is a danger zone he was having more success when he's keeping that breaking ball in around the waist of the left handed hitters he cannot go down and in and my point being is that if the pitcher can't put that breaking yeah. ball where he wants to all the time he has more of a chance with his fastball even the great breaking ball pitcher Steve Carlton you know who what I thought was like was like a computer fit into a computer. He was so awesome with the breaking stuff. Well, the great breaking ball pitchers they would work to get ahead with their fastball. They would maybe throw you get me over curveball, but they would get ahead with their fastball, so they wouldn't have to throw their breaking ball for a strike. That they could bounce it or try to throw the real nasty backdoor pitch. Two and two to Tucker, with two out and nobody on, and Weaver strikes him out. The inning is over. But the Mets get right back in the ball game on Carlos Delgado's grand slam. His 400th career home run, his second of the night. Two holes for the Cardinals, Delgado for the Mets. They've done all the damage, seven to five. Head to Coney Island September 6th as the Brooklyn Cyclones honor alum Brian Bannister. The former Cyclone is scheduled to be on hand and Bannister bobbleheads to the first 2,500 fans. Call 718-507-TIXX or go to brooklyncyclones.com. Well, Jeff Weaver had himself a 7-1 lead. But one big swing of Carlos Delgado's bat has sliced that down to 7-5. Well, you know, he just, uh, as we look at Guillermo Moda, has been struggling this year, but of course, in his heyday with the Dodgers, especially in 2003 when he pitched 105 innings with 99 Ks, he was outstanding. Opponent's batting average almost 300, so giving up a lot of hits for any pitch. And as the Cardinals come to bat here in the sixth, we're going to be joined by Mets third base coach Manny Actor from the Mets dugout. Manny, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you guys. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. Uh, a little better right now. <laughs> we're, we're watching a couple of great sluggers go mano a mano here. Yeah, it's a, it's quite a quite an event to to watch. Well, you. You know when you face Albert that you're, you're facing one of the best hitters in baseball and lately Carlos Delgado has just been in a, a, a wonderful hot streak. Yeah uh, no doubt I mean uh, Albert the, the key should be that any time he comes up uh, we shouldn't have any people on base but you know how it is I mean I know the guys are trying out there but you really don't want to see him come up with uh, guys on bases. Tell me what you've seen from Delgado lately that had been missing over the last uh, last couple of months. Well it, it's kind of easy to uh, to spot because when he gets into those slumps uh, Carlos is a little bit anxious and, and swinging you know early in the count and not seeing enough pitches and uh, when he goes through uh, those good streaks uh, you, you can see that he's taking pitches that are off the plate uh, they're kind of close but still off the plate and then uh, he, he gets to a point where he can hit, he can get his pitch and, and do some damage. Uh, I've been able to notice that uh, twice that he's been on those uh, slumps. You know Manny we saw Jose Okendo kind of uh, get Ronnie Belliard to try to score on that double being very aggressive which I think is a good thing when he got the lead. Uh, I know I watch you do that too but with this Met team and the way they can hit the home runs with Beltran and Delgado sometimes you have to be a little more conservative. Yeah absolutely uh, especially a day like today where we were trailing by six runs and uh, stuff like that and uh, we kind of try to pick and choose who we do those kind of things and you know where we're playing at and uh, and it depends on the score too but I mean they had a, a three run, two run lead and he tried to be aggressive there I mean uh, I respect Jose a lot he, he does a good job and it's just part of the game. 
pretty special play by Laduca on that play at the plate. Yeah, that's another thing. You know, uh, people don't realize how much it takes uh, to get a guy thrown out at the plate, especially in the relay play. First of all, the guy has to hit the first guy, and then he has to make a good throw, and this one was a short hop, and uh, Laduca did a great play picking that up. Runner goes, and uh, Encarnacion with a huge jump steals second. So a runner in scoring position for Preston Wilson. Manny, when, when you're in a situation like you guys are in with with a 13 and a half game lead as you watch Encarnacion stolen base and and a team like the Cardinals comes to town and there's every chance that your guys going to see them in October does it take on a special meaning a series like this. Oh definitely especially because uh, nobody's sitting here and just uh, think thinking that we already won this everybody uh, until mathematically we, we clinch we're not going to stop. But when a team's uh, like the Cardinals come to town, this is like a, a, a way to see if we, if we really, you know, can measure up what we've been doing. And, you know, this is a good team that probably is going to win their division. So let's see how we match up against them and stuff like that. So it's a challenge. Now, it, we could have been 500 games uh, over uh, up and uh, we're going to be we're going to get up for this one. You know, man, it's also a challenge with Albert having the night he's having tonight. And not seeing the Cardinals as much as you would like to see them. Uh, you only see them once in their place and once here. You really have to get the coaching staff has to get a book on how to go after a great hitter like Pools because in a short series he can beat you all by himself. Yeah definitely I like like he's done today. I mean he's driven in all seven runs already but you know the thing is you fall behind in the count or you know you make a mistake uh, up here and guys like him are going to make you pay. They're not going to fall off the pitches and you guys know that know that better than me and uh, unfortunately today on the first one he was trying to get, you know what he was trying to do go the other way get one in move one over and the pitch was up in the zone and you know with a guy like him uh, that's that's the least he could do with it. one more thought before we let you go Manny I know you've had Guillermo Mota in winter ball before what are your thoughts about uh, him making his Mets debut tonight well I think uh, it's a good addition I mean uh, only two years ago two three years ago with the Dodgers he was uh, pretty much the best set up man in baseball up until Dwayne Sanchez came around and uh, and it was uh, they, they they moved him over to Florida he got hurt in Florida a little bit and he was hurt a little bit the year before but if he has his arm strength uh, had him in winter ball before and uh, that change up uh, he can be uh, help here and uh, I don't know if you guys know but he, he's a former Mets too he used to be a shortstop in our minor league system here. As he strikes out Preston Wilson for his first strikeout as a Met. Well, Manny, thanks very much for joining us. It's always fun to have you. Thanks. All Second right. Thank you, guys. All right, Manny Act of the Mets third base coach joining us from the Mets dugout. And here's Moda striking out Wilson. Well, that's that changeup that Acta was just talking about. 85 mile an hour changeup after throwing 95 mile an hour fastballs. You see Jeff Weaver having some problem in his digits. Middle and blister. Four finger. Maybe a blister. Ron Belliard waves at the off speed pitch nothing in one. It's a good call Keith probably is a blister when it's on the end of the fingers like that. Belliard one for two singled in the third then was thrown out at the plate. On Molina's double. One and one Adam Wainwright the right hander in the Cardinals bullpen. So the Mets. We'll keep their bullpen busy with Bradford and Feliciano adding a bullpen arm with Guillermo Moda who had been struggling in Cleveland this year and now making his Mets debut tonight at back of John Maine. And he throws hard. That splitter gets him ahead of Belliard one and two. Well look at the action here. It's really dropping out huh Ron. Yeah he really gets on top of this pitch. And you know as a hitter you got to look fastball of Moto. He throws hard enough that keeps you awake with that fastball. Two and two and many active mentioned Moda's history with the Mets. He was uh, originally signed by the Mets. It's amazing that a guy that size was ever a shortstop. <laughs> He's about six foot six. But of course he also has some negative history with the Mets. He was involved in a couple of spring training dust ups with Mike Piazza in 2002 and 2003. And I think it's fair to say that if Mike were still here it would have been very hard to bring Moda aboard. 
But with Mike gone, I guess all that's in the past. Two and two to Belliard. And for whatever problems he was having in Cleveland, he's throwing 97 miles an hour. It begs the question if he's throwing 97 and that split finger changeup is 85 miles an hour, that is a big, huge differential between your fastball and your changeup. Makes you wonder about his control. Is he pitching behind in the count? Yes. Look at Weaver, you have to wonder whether he's coming back. Having given up the Delgado Grand Slam. Only 94 pitches for Weaver, but they've got that bullpen cranking. The spot, the order is two spots away. Due to the Billiard. Struck him out with a splitter. Back to back strikeouts for Moda. Well, nice pitch by Moda just. The catcher, Yadier Molina. This ball stays right on that outside corner and goes straight down. See that grip? That's a circle change grip. And to have that kind of movement on a circle change is uh, pretty amazing. It nice really, pitch by Moda. It really does move like a splitter. It does. It, it gets a lot of sinking action. Bottom drops out. So two away. Encarnacion still at second. And here's Molina. Takes the change up low. I'll tell you one thing for someone that throws that hard, he loves his change up, doesn't he, Ronnie? Well, that a lot of them. That goes back to the point you just made. Sometimes you fall in love with a pitch that's a swing and miss pitch, and you're going to make more mistakes with your change ups than you are with a 97 mile an hour fastball. Oh, nice play down there. That's why you bring your glove. Watch this. Oh, it looked like he took it right away from his son, though. Oh, sign him up. <laughs> Good extension. Send him to rookie league tomorrow. <laughs> One and two to Molina, and he's throwing him three straight changes. This has not been the best of years for Yadier Molina. Hitting just 219, although that's a lot better than he was hitting about two months ago. Moda ahead one and two. Hit hard, but right at David Wright. Makes the play to first side retired. So a successful first outing is a met for Guillermo Moda. He gives up a leadoff base hit. Retires the next three with a couple of strikeouts. Cardinals go to their bullpen 7-5 St. Louis. Get to Shea for Backpack Night on Thursday, August 24th. The first 12,000 kids 12 and under will receive a backpack courtesy of Verizon Wireless. Visit Mets.com for your printed home tickets. And both ugly because of the two long ball artists. Two home runs by Albert Pujols off John Main. Two home runs for Carlos Delgado off Jeff Weaver. Each of the sluggers hit a grand slam. And both starters are now done for the night, although Weaver leaves with a chance to win. So Taguchi comes in for defense in center field. Juan Encarnacion moves from center to right. He'll bat, uh, Taguchi will bat ninth in the order. And on to pitch is Adam Wainwright. He'll hit in Preston Wilson's number six spot. As Andy Chavez leads off the home sixth inning. And he takes ball one. Well, the Mets countered with Moda, their 6 7 pitcher, and Adam Wainwright, the Cardinals 6 7 pitcher. Is, he won a job in spring training. They wanted him to be a starter, had an outstanding minor league career, career as a starter, and believe someday he will be that for the Cardinals. Cut. 1 1 to Chavez. Andy is 0 for 2. He's popped a third and fly to right. Drops the bunt down, they'll never throw him out. What a great bunt by Chavez. That was just perfect by Andy Chavez right there. 
Not only did he bust it properly, killing it down the third baseline, great technique, but also disguised it so well. Very, very hard to see him turn around and square with that bat. Very good bunt. So the Mets get the tying run to the plate. They were down seven to one in this game. It's seven to five. Chavez aboard for Woodward, who has struck out and hit a comeback. Time called by Woodward as Wainwright held the ball. Time for the Mets home run inning presented by Amtrak Acela Express. If the Mets had a home run, one grand prize winner will win a trip anywhere in the Northeast with Amtrak Acela Express. To enter or see if you're a contestant, visit sny.tv slash Amtrak today. Wainwright misses with the fastball one and up. Pitcher spot is due up next and nice to see Jose Valentin in the on deck circle did not play all weekend because of the hamstring. And Woodward foul tips the bunt. I talked to Valentin before the game tonight and he said he did all his running maneuvers before the game. He did all his side to side moves to check out the hamstring and it all felt great. He said he just wanted to give it one more day. He said it felt great while I was doing it one after the other and I was heated up. He said I'm just a little concerned if it's the fifth inning and I haven't made a quick move about making that first quick move. So he figures he'll be playing by tomorrow. Smart veteran that's uh, you know what happens to a lot of young players. They get hurt they can't wait to get back in and they end up hurting themselves again. So Valentin taking the right amount of time as you see Pedro Feliciano the left hander in the Mets bullpen. Well, when you've got a big lead, yeah. you can afford to be patient. It's when the, it's the races are tight, is when they rush the players back because they want to get them in as back as soon as possible. And that's when they get re injured and you wind up at this point in the season. If you re injure it, you might be out for the rest of the year. Yeah. You're a little surprised to see the Cardinals pitch out there with the Mets down by two runs? No. Oh, because <laughs> it's La Russa? Because Tony, <laughs> Tony La Russa takes over the running game. Good hit and run pitch, too, I think, too. So I think he was saying if he put a hit and run on here with Woodward who handles the bat good, I've got a runner that's not trying to steal a base. So we'll get we'll get him we'll dead to right on a one on one count. Do you feel as though Tony takes more control of the game than most managers in that regard? He takes the most control of the running game of any manager I ever played for to the point that I spent one spring training. And with the Cardinals, I was asked by Tony La Russa after I retired, finish after this pitch, to come to spring training for a couple of weeks and to work and explain what he wants you to do as a pitcher in stopping the running game. So you were a coach? Nah, never, ever. Hard to think of myself as a coach. <laughs> ever. Three and two to Woodward. But I, I did have a uniform on, I was a little heavier. Uh, I guess I you played were, the part of the coach. You were a coach. <laughs> or you played one in a movie or something. <laughs> well, I think it's a compliment to you, Ron, that LaRusa would have you come and teach the pitchers because that means that LaRusa felt that you knew how to stop runners and you had a great pickoff move. You know that. That's for sure. Let's see if Chavez runs three and two, nobody out. He's holding and it's ball four, and the Mets have the tying runs on base. So the Mets with a chance here. They've come most of the way back and now Valentin will come up with two aboard and nobody out. Tony La Russa now in his 28th season as a big league manager and no active manager has more wins. One World Series title. Four pennants. Great work that he does with animal rights. I didn't know animals had rights. <laughs> you haven't met Tony then. Where are we going in this country? What direction is this country going? Animals have rights? <laughs> Here's Valentin. Let's see if the Mets bunt in this spot with the tying runs on base. Roland cheating in from third. And he is bunting and fouls it off. Reyes on deck. 
And so at least on that first pitch, really looking to move the runners to give Reyes a chance to tie the game. See if he's still bunting here. Valentine hitting at 285. And he gets the bunt down beautifully. Roland gets the out. But you can't advance him any better than that. Now Chavez sneaking down the line with nobody looking at him. And then retreats. Well, great job by Valentine. Now a basic to tie the game. Well, you're a beautiful bun here. You want to get the third baseman to field it. And you can't do it any better than this. You saw it right there. You saw Roland position himself. He didn't want to charge. But he had to in that play. Coaches always talk about catching the ball on your bat. Boy, classic right there. And when you punt the third in that situation, you have to make sure you punch it a little harder. You've got to get the third baseman to field it, not the pitcher. So two in scoring position for Reyes who's 0 for 3 in this game and just one for his last 17 but 61 RBIs out of the leadoff spot this year. In the dirt and Molina knocks it down That saves a run. Let me tell you that was a great block by Molina. This was not an easy pick. It's a curveball in the dirt. Oh he backhanded it though that's not the right way no, to do it. No, it Good came off bad form. Yes. That to tell you he is a little lucky. Yes. Hit his mask. And it was not the proper fundies, Gary. <laughs> Ready for a Joni Mitchell reference, the Bay of Fundy. One and to Reyes who's hitting 330 with runners in scoring position. Wide strike, one and one. James Hoy is the home plate umpire tonight, a vacation replacement. Job is at third, Woodward at second, and one out. With a great stop and then able to throw out Reyes. That's tremendous. What a play right here. Saving the second run from scoring. He knows he has no time to set himself with a speedy Reyes. That's just a fine play. Well, that's the second time in this game Reyes has been robbed. Beautiful play. Look at that. His momentum carrying him to left field. What a play. Well, Reyes gets the run in, but there's still the tying run standing at third base with two out for LaDuca. And he bounces one to short. And Miles has to play, throws high, but handled by Pujols. And that ends the inning. Well, it started with a bunt single by Chavez, and the Mets get a run in to cut the Cardinal lead to one, but Belliard kept the Mets from tying it. Matt Yaloff here with a Chevrolet Baseball Night in New York update. Orioles and Twins, and what a night for Nick Markakis. This is his first home run of the night. He has three of them. The Orioles lead the Twins 6-1 to one in the eighth. Garrett? All right, thanks very much, Matt. The Twins, a half game behind the White Sox in that wild card coming into play tonight. White Sox trailing in Detroit 4 nothing. So that might give the Red Sox a chance to get a little closer after their weekend disaster against the Yankees. Boston's at Anaheim tonight as you look at Pedro Feliciano. Well lowest ERA of National League relievers Feliciano just had a great season out of making the team out of spring training then not making the team and then being called back up so only 47 hits in those 48 innings. So Taguchi the first man up against Feliciano. Oh. 
Reyes guns down to Gucci, one away. The shortstop, Aaron Miles. Here's Aaron Miles with one out. Miles one for two in a walk. And he takes a strike. And that missed somewhere. <laughs> one and one. Well, coming into this game, Miles is hitting 40 points lower as a right handed hitter. His left handed side is his best. Strike one and two. Randy Flores, who was up earlier, gets up in the Cardinal bullpen. Two and two. And Chad Bradford staying loose for Albert Pujols, who's two batters away. Never without a bat in his hand. Two two to Miles and he misses with a backdoor breaking ball. Well Mets.com is reporting and apparently it's about to happen that the Mets have acquired Sean Green from the Arizona Diamondbacks. We have not yet heard about how they're going to handle the money issues. In other words, how much of the salary the Diamondbacks will pick up? Did he go? He stopped the swing, and Miles draws the walk. One out and one on. Well, here's a look from the top. See if he broke his wrist. Well, you know what? They call it so much today, Ron, that I'm just shocked they didn't ring him up. But my mind, right there, he didn't break his wrist, but he didn't go. Maybe the question is on a 3-2 pitch. Aaron Miles not a home run hitter. Maybe you'd like to challenge him there with a fastball. That might be, you know, make, make more sense instead of trying to trick him. Here's Chris Duncan, and he takes a strike. Well, the Mets have now officially announced that they've acquired Sean Green. It just was handed to us. The Mets have given up minor league left-hander Evan McLean, who was nine and eight at Norfolk this year. Breaking ball and Duncan way out in front. And we still don't know how the salaries are being handled. Again, Sean Green acquired by the Mets tonight for minor league left hander Evan McLean. Sean Green, 33 years old, hitting 283 for Arizona this year, 11 homers, 51 RBIs. Well, Duncan hitting 222 with only two home runs against left handers. And you got to believe that Feliciano is not going to face the guy in the on deck circle. One and two to Duncan. Just missed with the fastball, two and two. So if you all want to go for a beer or a soda in the refrigerator, get ready. <laughs> Two and two to Duncan. Breaking ball misses. Three and two. A couple of very close pitches. Not called strikes by James Hoy. And now it's three and two. Well, Will, you should be hot. That is the strike. I mean, literally, that ball comes on the inside corner. Ooh, it broke around the plate. Yeah. Well, close. James Hoy has had a big strike zone all night long. Seems to tighten it up here a little in the seventh inning. Well, there have been three pitches now that Feliciano has thrown that easily could have been called strikes and were not. Let's see if Miles runs. He does not. And Duncan fouls it off. More on the Sean Green trade. The Mets announced that they have gotten cash considerations from the Diamondbacks, but they haven't said how much. Again, Green has a nine and a half million dollar contract for next year, a ten million dollar option for 08 with a two million dollar buyout. 
And the Mets also announced that to make room for Green on the 40 man roster, Victor Diaz has been designated for assignment, taken off the 40 man roster. And the breaking ball, low ball four. Well, Feliciano walks Miles and Duncan. He certainly deserves better against Duncan. But now there are two men on for Pujols, who's already hit two home runs and driven in seven runs tonight. His assignment will be Chad Bradford's. <laughs> that says it all. I feel your pain. That's a big oh no right there. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon Wireless. You too can make the switch over to the most reliable network, Verizon Wireless. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Max and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Max. Get your Mets season ticket pack to guarantee your seats for all 15 September home games and secure a ticket purchase option for all 2006 postseason games at Shea. Go to Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX to get your season ticket pack now. Chad Bradford takes over the pitching. His assignment, get out a guy who's driven in seven runs in his last two at bats. Well, let me tell you, Chad Bradford has done it all season long. Certainly, this will be one of his biggest, biggest challenges this year, facing Albert Pujols, one of the best hitters in baseball on a night he's hot. Miles at second, Duncan at first and one out. Pujols with a three-run homer in the fourth, a grand slam in the fifth. Now comes up with two men on in the seventh. Let's see if he runs sinkers at him. Goes away and finds the corner. That was not intentional. That was meant to be a sinker down and in. But Chad Bradford always shows you that he's aggressive with the first pitch. He tries to get that strike one. Who holds to short should be two. Reyes to Woodward and on the first double play side retired. Woodward got flipped by Duncan at second base. He's okay. So is Bradford who got the job done. Aggressive slide by Duncan took out Woodward and the Mets get through the top of the seventh. New York and the Mets and Cardinals meeting at Shea for the first time this year and it's been a battle of the sluggers. Two home runs for Pujols. Two home runs for Delgado. Each with a grand slam. Delgado's 400th career home run. And the Mets, who were down 7-1 to one in this game, fighting back. It's 7-6 to six in favor of the Cardinals as the Mets sent up the heart of the batting order in the bottom of the seventh inning. And they'll do it against the lefty Randy Flores. Appearing in his 56th second game, sorry, but he hasn't thrown. Had an appearance in six days. Beltron 0 for 3 tonight. And it came up with the bases loaded his last time up and had a comebacker into a force play. And Flores falls behind him 2 0. It'll be Beltron, then Delgado, who already has two home runs tonight, including his 11th career grand slam. There's a fastball strike 2 and 1 from Flores. You know the headline tomorrow will be that the Mets have acquired Sean Green and that certainly is a useful acquisition for this team and they'll mention that Evan McLean who was really not considered a big prospect the lefty who was having a good year at Norfolk will go the other way and that the Diamondbacks will pick up a certain percentage of the money due to Green over the next two years lost in all that will be the news that Victor Diaz has been designated for assignment which means for all intents and purposes he's gone from the Mets organization. You talk about a guy whose star plummeted. The fall from grace can happen quickly in this game happened to Diaz. Daltron to shortstop Miles. Throws him out one away. Well here was the takeout at second base and in that inning ending double play. Didn't get there in time, but that's all clear. That, that is all good stuff. That's clean baseball. The grab of the leg was okay. That, you're going to get away with that. He's already throwing the ball. Look at Willie, a former second baseman. He appreciates that. He's probably telling me that he grabbed me. 
Well, here's Delgado with the Mets down by a run. He's already homered twice tonight. And he takes a slider for a strike. Delgado with a solo shot in the second. And a monstrous grand slam in the fifth. His 400th career home run. Now it's 31 for the year. And 85 RBI. And Flores gets ahead of him 0 2. And that's that follow through the Walt Hereniak follow through. Huh. That's right. I almost forgot that follow through. Gedman and other people in that time when Walt was the hitting coach for the Red Sox. To left center, shallow, Duncan in, and he picks it off. Throws in the slide for artistic purposes. <laughs> two away. Only gets a good jump on this ball. He's two for three tonight. He's caught two and dropped one. Yeah, he took his eye off the ball, didn't he? Took his eyes or closed his eyes. Maybe it got in the lights. As we check out the Hyundai in game box score, Delgado has been front and center tonight with his two home runs. He's driven in five of the six med runs. Loduka with a couple of hits. Reyes had an RBI ground out. He's been robbed twice in this game. And right goes the other way to deep right, but Encarnacion is there, and that ends the inning. Right hitting the ball hard, but it's been another unproductive night for David. He's gone over four. And the Mets still down by a run. Head to Shea, Saturday, August 26th, when the Mets battle the Phillies. The first 12,000 kids, 12 and under, will receive a reading kit with three great books, courtesy of Banco Popular. For tickets, visit Mets.com. Former President Clinton enjoying the game from his front row seat here at Shea tonight. Looks like he can use them just for men. <laughs> Maybe you can go down and plug it for him. Mr. President. Mr. President, I've got a product that you might like to try. <laughs> I have a great fascination for men that let their hair turn silver now as I'm on my way. I wish I had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Rowland leads off the eighth inning against Chad Bradford, who came on and did his job brilliantly in the seventh. Came in with two men on and got Albert Pujols to ground into an inning ending double play. I can't say enough good things about Chad Bradford. He shows you not only he throws strikes, but he has a lot of guts. Former Met Braden Looper up in the St. Louis bullpen. And that slow oh. slider pulled. Oh off. man, that's the way that guy caught the ball last time. Maybe it, someone get hurt there? I'm telling you. I don't know how they don't get hurt more. That was a bullet in there. How about that? Got the ball and no blood. Everybody's fine. One and two to Roland. Roland 0 for three tonight has not had the ball out of the infield. One Encarnacion on deck and then the pitcher spot here in the top of the eighth. The left center. Easy play for Beltron. One away. So one out and nobody on one Encarnacion coming up. If you missed the news earlier today. Tom Glavin is going to be good to go for all the fears about the potential of a season ending medical problem. It turns out that Glavin's condition in his left arm was the result of an old injury that was producing scar tissue that formed a couple of minor blood clots to form in his fingers. As Encarnacion drives one to the gap in left center, that's an extra base hit. Encarnacion heads to second in standing with a double, his 21st of the year. Anyway, the, uh, the the condition Glavin has is going to be treated with baby aspirin, of all things. He should be ready for baseball activity in a couple of days and ready to pitch in seven to ten days, which is about as good a result as the Mets could possibly have hoped for. As Tony La Russa looks for a pinch hitter. Where are my where's my left-handed bench? Where's Timo Perez, Scott Spezio, and Jim Edmond? There's Timo. Now this is going to be Timo's first at bat here at Shea Stadium since the Mets let him go. I wonder what kind of reaction he'll get. Timo, who was with the Mets for Your four years.
A few cheers. Mixed. A few boos. And a few who sat on their hands. Well, it's not the way to endear yourself with your manager when it's an obvious pinch hitting situation with the pitcher and you're, you're not on the bench. <laughs> well, he just joined the ball club. He uh, he was just called up. And uh, Timo, who has himself a World Series ring after playing with the White Sox last year, will be intentionally walked. Now, did I miss did I miss the tribute video for Timo? <laughs> No tribute video. You know, the Mets don't get to the World Series in 2000 without Timo Perez. You're right. Now he may have made a base running boo boo in game one, game one of the World Series, and he might not have had a very good series against the Yankees, but he was brilliant against the Giants and the Cardinals in the two series leading up to them. I think he scored eight runs in five games against the Cardinals in the League Championship Series. It's such a critical game that first game in that 2000 World Series. Boy, if the Mets could have won that game, the first game in Yankee Stadium, that could have changed the whole complexion of that series. And we know we all remember Todd Zeal's double off the top of the wall, and Timo was uh, in, in assuming that it was over the fence, and he wound up being thrown out of the plate on a great relay by Derek Jeter. There's Tyler Johnson, the left-hander, joining Braden Looper in the Cardinal bullpen. Ron Belliard takes a strike but remember the other thing that happened on that play if you remember the video of it Timo slows up celebrating thinking it's a home run but Todd Zeal was celebrating coming around first base pumping his fist in the air he thought it was a home run too. To third should be a double play right to second for one Woodward to first scooped out by Delgado double play side retired. Delgado two home runs and a big scoop Woodward turns over another one as Bradford generates his second double play in two innings. The team the time the celebration as soon as this September the WB 11 is changing into the new CW 11 so what does this mean to fans of the WB 11 news well the name of the station may be changing but the CW 11 will still be the place to find your favorite news shows in the morning and at night let's check in with Chris Cotter Chris well as Michael Tucker comes up to the plate here in the bottom of the eighth inning if you've been watching the game you know former president Bill Clinton is in attendance and before the game he paid a visit to the Mets clubhouse and I asked Jose Reyes Afterward, I said, hey, did he give you any inspirational speeches? Because that's what he does now. He writes and he goes on the walking tour, the speaking tour. And he said, no, I just took pictures with everybody. So I was a little disappointing as Michael Tucker gets plunked and heads to first base. But the former commander in chief didn't give the Mets any inspiration. But if you'll notice, sitting right by him is his brother and his nephew. And they're wearing Cardinals gear. So maybe that's why. Wow. Well, Clinton uh, grew up, former President Clinton grew up in Arkansas. They have a double A team, Little Rock, in Arkansas. A lot of people in Arkansas are Cardinal fans. And Hillary grew up a Cubs fan. That's right. That's quite a rivalry <laughs> in that family. So the Mets get the tying run on as Tyler Johnson, the young left hander, comes in and plunks Michael Tucker with his first pitch. You expect Andy Chavez to bunt here against the lefty. And he gets it down. Johnson, though, looks at oh, second, oh, turns oh. down the play. He might have had him, and he made the throw, but he let Tucker go, and now the tying run in scoring position. Oh, it's called Archie Bell in the drills here. He's turned, ready to throw. Just doesn't have. Oh, 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 I think I'll play safety first. He that's had him. That's the tighten up. Yes. yes. Archie Bell in the drills. Yes. He had that play. <laughs> But one of the things that the Cardinals do is Duncan comes out to pull Johnson for the right hand of Braden Looper. The Cardinals play very conservative on the bunt. Tony La Russa has always been like that. And this is Braden Looper's return to Shea Stadium. Sports Night on Sportsnet New York. 
the news and information source for all New York area sports fans. Three shows a night, the destination for the latest news on every area team. Geico Sports Night covers the stories that New York sports fans care about. Our reporters and anchors will deliver to you live from Studio 51 at Rockefeller Center West. If it happens in New York, it happens on Geico Sports Night. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. The Mets continue their series with Albert Pujols and the Cardinals tomorrow and Thursday at 7.10 p.m. Then be at Shea Friday at 7.10 for the start of a weekend series with the Phillies. Go to Mets.com now for your print at home tickets. And yes, folks, that's the curly shuffle. <laughs> well, it worked on uh, Saturday night. I am it. so glad they brought this back. Well, speaking of bringing back, this brought back memories for Met fans when Braden Looper was announced into the game and he was not exactly afforded a hero's welcome. <laughs> well, he was the closer for the Mets last year. He's become the setup man to Isringhausen. As you see the Mets, they have Wagner up in case the Mets go ahead. Heilman up if it's if they're still down by a run. Well, Braden Looper last year struggled. Turned out that he had pitched the entire season with an injury to his AC joint in his shoulder and he had that corrected surgically after the season and the reason he didn't have it before is because he felt too much responsibility to miss six weeks during the season. The manager knew about it the pitching coach knew about it, everybody on the team knew about it but nobody said anything publicly the entire season until Looper revealed the injury the last series of the year which I thought was phenomenal on his part that he took all the abuse that he took last year without ever telling the public that he was hurt. Boy that makes you uh, think twice as a fan as a person who does our job and also that makes him a great teammate to be able to do that. Yep. Here's Chris Woodward and he dribbles one out in front of the plate Molina pounces on it. Two away over to third goes Tucker. Now, not that I'm a genius, but I recall in April, and you can see uh, Molina just pouncing on this little dribbler in front, easy play. But I noticed in late April, early May, that he had he said his delivery was different. And I said it on TV, you know, not that I'm a genius. There's certain things yeah. you get used to see how it was a different delivery. Yep. I said it looks like you something's yep. wrong with him. But we didn't know anything about it. No, we talked about on the radio last year too that his delivery looked weird, that it looked like he was hurt. But he never let on. He was asked repeatedly last year whether he was hurt. Always said no. Always took the ball. Understood what his role was on the team and kept taking the ball. And I got to see him in limited action and did not see what you guys saw. All I saw was his pitch selection. I saw him throw so many fastballs over and over that my question was, I, I thought he had a good break of ball. Why doesn't he throw it? Well, that was the reason. Because he couldn't get on top of the ball to get it down yeah. because of the injury. Well, Julio Franco will turn 48 years of age tomorrow. <laughs> he can give himself and his team an early birthday present if he can come through here as a pinch hitter with the tying run at third base and two out. Tucker 90 feet away. Looper returning to his old haunts and trying to keep the Cardinals in front. Boy there's nothing more difficult than that two out RBI. Franco trying to pick it up here. Franco four for 11 in his career against Looper. Most of that as a brave against Looper as a Met. There's a strike. Tucker was hit by a pitch leading off the inning. He's moved to third on a sacrifice and a ground ball. Looper ahead on Franco 0 and 2. Everybody clap your hands. Yeah. Jose Reyes hoping for a turn on deck, but right now it's in the hands of Franco, and he's down in the count 0 and 2.
You notice the infield defense is kind of fairly straight up. You think that with two strikes in particular, you'd move the shortstop over. Second base and belly are definitely get him over. On the outside corner, strike three call. Looper gets Franco looking. A successful return to Shea for Looper, and he keeps the Cardinals in a one run lead. Matt Yaloff here with a Chevrolet Baseball Night in New York update. Astros and Reds, and it's all Reds. Scott Hatterberg with a three-run blast to put the Reds up 4-0. They've added 10 since. It's 14-0 in the ninth. Garrett. All right, Matt, so the Reds with a chance to extend their wild card lead, which was two games over the Padres start of the night. Florida leading Washington 7-4. Milwaukee up on Colorado 2-0. The Phillies trying to survive the loss of Aaron Rowan two and a half back in the wild card and leading at Wrigley Field later tonight the Dodgers and Padres Padres won last night to get within three games of L.A. and Arizona playing at San Francisco Aaron Howman on to pitch the top of the ninth for New York. Well Howman could not have been any better as he's gotten this eighth inning work after Sanchez was hurt 26 walks 58 strikeouts. And he'll try and keep this a one run game as he takes on Yadier Molina, who takes the changeup for ball one. Molina one for three on the night. He doubled in the fifth. Delyard tried to score from first on the play and was thrown out. And he rips one foul. And a great catch wow. again. Eyes closed, I believe. We have seen two spectacular plays down there. Let's see if he. Oh, <laughs> what'd you say when you were kids? Look what I found. <laughs> the guy behind him is very happy that that didn't go right through his glove. <laughs> yeah, still a good play. Yes, it was. Lean out ahead of the changeup again, one and two. Whoa, the lady on the right was <laughs> bailing, incoming. <laughs> Look at the right. <laughs> I'd be bailing too if I didn't have a glove. And back to what we always see. Right to the cell phone as soon as a, a <laughs> play is made. I'm on TV. <laughs> two and two to Molina. Well, another former Met, Jason Isringhausen, getting set to try and close it out for the Cardinals. Him out. Alman fans Molina one down in the top of the ninth. Well, beautiful change up here, pulling the string on Molina. Thought to be the best offensive player of the three Molina brothers, but has struggled through a difficult year. In 2006, Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York are teaming up to strike out cancer. For every K, the Mets pitching staff registers. Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York will donate $25. To the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund. If you'd like to help, please go to www.hopeandheroes.org. So Taguchi up for the second time, grounded out to short in the seventh after coming on in a double switch. One and one. Well, the Mets will be up against Isringhouse in the ninth inning, and Izzy has been far from perfect this year. He's had eight blown saves, although he's the all time leader for the Cardinals in saves. One and two to Taguchi. You know, guys, they said that one of the problems he's had a couple of years ago, he developed a cutter, a la Mariano Rivera, and he's been very inconsistent with it this year. In there for a call strike three. Howman gets Taguchi looking at the fastball, back to back strikeouts for Aaron Howman. Well, he must have been looking for the change because he got caught here. The shortstop. It's got Aaron set up. Miles. Nice pitch. Yeah, Howman added a little grunt on that 95 mile an hour fastball. Was he sleeping? No, I think he was just studying. Seven six game, falling asleep. <laughs> Aaron Miles takes ball one.
Lyles has been aboard three times in a row single and two walks he scored two runs. And Hammond has him out in front one and one. John Main started this game he got tagged for two Albert Pujols home runs a three run homer and a grand slam seven runs in five innings. The bullpen's been solid so far. Chad Bradford did great work. Guillermo Mota, a scoreless inning in his Mets debut. But so far, the Mets have been unable to catch all the way up from a 7 1 deficit. They'll try and do that against Isringhausen in the bottom of the ninth. Down to Delgado, and a 1 2 3 inning for Heilman. So Halman does his job and now it's up to the Mets to try and get it done with the top of the batting order Reyes LaDuca and Dultron do up against Isringhausen into the bottom of the ninth. You're going to start a fake school? Welcome to South Arman Institute of Technology. Accepted is a total triumph. Ask me about my wiener. A raucously funny and deliciously subversive comedy. Can't believe this is a class. Yeah. Accepted. <laughs> Rated PG-13. Start your smoke free life today. As we check out tonight's AOL game summary. After the pitch to Jose Reyes. And he takes ball one from Jason Isringhausen. There's the AOL game summary. The Pujols and Delgado show. <laughs> Seven RBIs for Pujols, five for Delgado. Reyes is 0 for 4. He's driven in a run with a ground out. Twice he's been robbed of hits in this game. Once by Chris Duncan in left field, once by Ron Belliard at second base. Well, Isenhausen, one of the elite savers since year 2000, third on the list with 237 saves. And Belliard throws out Reyes for the first out. There's a huge out for Isringhausen. Boy, you just took the words right out of my mouth. That is a huge out. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> I believe the word was huge. <laughs> So here's Loduca. Isringhausen has blown eight saves this year. He's given up nine home runs. Those are not good closers numbers. Loduca two for four tonight. That's a run shy in the ninth. Ball one. Carlos Beltran waiting on deck. Isringhausen now 33 years old. Part of Generation K, much heralded. Came up to the big leagues in 95, went 9 and 2 that year as a starter. But then injuries intruded. And the Mets finally dealt him to Oakland in 99, and that's where he became a closer. And a terrific one. To center field. In comes Taguchi off the plate on a hop, and it gets by him only briefly. He just got enough of that ball to prevent it from really getting behind him. So Laduca has his third hit. Well, nice try by Taguchi. He realizes he can't get to it, but he almost botched it here. Took his eye off the ball before he had it. Boy, lucky he didn't get by him. So one out and one on. And here's Beltron, where one swing could win it for New York. He whips it to deep right. The ball is out of here. Out of here. The Mets win the ball game. Beltron with a walk off two run homer in the bottom of the ninth.
at the beginning of this game about this potentially being an MVP showdown. For most of the night, it belonged to Pujols. The last shot belonged to Beltron. Well, 0 for 4 on the night and being very quiet, but gets the game-winning two-run shot and says, hey, I'm a candidate, too. Clutch out. Oh. Talk about an emphatic jump on home plate. He's got hops. Wow. And he's got a smile <laughs> that was never seen in 2005, but has been off witnessed in 2006. 36 homers for Beltran, 103 RBIs, two home runs for Carlos Delgado, the game winner for Carlos Beltran, trumping seven RBIs for Albert Pujols, and the Mets win it in walk-off fashion for the 10th time this year. Let's go to Chris Cotter. Carlos, 10th time you guys have won it uh, in the last at-bat. You guys never stop believing you can get it done, do you? Well, I think it's a dream that we're never going to quit. You know, no matter how far we are in the game, we're going to try to come back. And I just want to thank my Lord for letting me come through in that particular bat. You know, we win today's ball game. It's always great every time you win the first game out of the series. Seven to one, though. You guys were trailing in this game, and uh, it was a pool hole show. You guys uh, put a stop to that, though. Well, he's a dangerous hitter. You know, that's why he's one of the best. You know, every time he connects the ball, it's almost home run all, all the time. So, you know, he hit the grand slam, a home run with two guys on. So, but like I say, you know, we were able to come back and we win this one. Isringhausen is one of the best closers in the game. Take me through that at bat. Well, in that particular at bat, I know his best pitch is a quarter. So I was trying to, you know, step a little bit away from the plate. And uh, he threw me one right in the middle of the plate. And I was able to, you know, hit it. And as soon as I hit it, I know what's going to be out of the ballpark. So I was very happy about it. All right, thanks, Carlos. Thank you. All right, Gary. All right, thanks, Chris. It's the first time this year the Mets have come from six runs down to win. And they do it on the bats of the Carloses. Well, great job by the offense of the Mets to come back in that game. Great job after John Maynard, the bullpen again coming through for the Mets with four shutout innings. Well, do you think that Carlos Beltran, all this talk of John B comeback player of the year, but we got a guy down there, the Mets, that's a comeback player of the year as well as an MVP candidate. Well, he certainly put in his bid with that last swing off Jason Isringhausen and gives the Mets an 8-7 to seven win over the Cardinals in the opening game of this series. Be sure to join us for our next Mets broadcast tomorrow night at 7 as the Mets continue their series against the St. Louis Cardinals. Coming up next is Nissan Post Game Live. What a ball game here at Shea tonight. Opener of three between the Mets and Cardinals. Chris Duncan played defense early. And then Carlos Delgado got it going. Albert Pujols had a big night in his own right. A three-run homer and a grand slam. Delgado responded with a grand slam of his own. A great play at the plate. But when it all was said and done, it was Carlos Beltran's two-run walk-off home run off Jason Isringhausen in the bottom of the ninth that wins it for New York 8 to seven. Now for Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling, Chris Cotter, and our entire SNY crew, I'm Gary Cohen. Let's go to Matt Yaloff. He's standing by in our Sportsnet New York studio. Thank you very much, Gary Cohen. Coverage of the Mets continues here with Nissan Post Game Live. We'll break this whole thing down. Mets and Cardinals in an amazing game of power display put on by three of the best power hitters in all the National League. You'll hear from Willie Randolph as well. And then, of course, Geico Sports Night follows Nissan Post Game Live with an update on Tom Glavin. You'll hear from the Mets lefty. Big day plus a big Mets trade. It's all coming up after a break. Well, the two best teams in the NL slug it out and flushing. What a day at Shea. Welcome to Nissan Post Game Live. Matt Yaloff here. Early in the day, the Mets found out Tom Glavin is good to go in about a week or so. Then during the game, the Mets announced a trade. We'll get to that. And if that wasn't enough, three of the best power hitters in the league put on a display under the lights at Shea Stadium. Highlights, Cardinals and Mets in game one of a three-game set. Yeah, maybe a playoff preview. Definitely a former president in attendance. And John Maine looking to get over the 500 mark. He has been great facing Albert Pujols. There's one. There's two. 
And then Albert Pujols, look at that. He gets him, goes up top with an 86 mile an hour pitch. Pujols 0 for 8 against the Mets this season. There's Jeff Weaver. Wild season for Weaver. Started with the Angels. Ineffective. He's come over to the Cardinals. And here he is with Jose Reyes. And check out Chris Duncan laying out for the sake of team. Beautiful catch. Duncan, the son of Cardinals pitching coach Dave Duncan. And Weaver on the mound. He says, that's my man out there and left. And then Carlos Delgado. I guess he's out of that slump. He crushes this one over the wall. The Mets are up 1-0. The 10th consecutive season for Delgado with at least 30 home runs. How about it? Fourth inning. Duncan rips it down into the right field corner. The Cardinals are in business. They have runners on second and third. Albert Pujols. Uh-oh. They pitch the Pujols second and third, and he makes them pay. His 37th of the year. The other way, it's a blast to right center. It's 3-1. Fifth inning, Ronnie Belliard on, Yadier Merlina. This goes to left, and it hops the wall, or into the wall. Michael Tucker gets it to Reyes. Check out this play by Paula Duca. Unbelievable. A backhand short hop. You'll see if he got him right here. This is the good angle. Yes, and then tags his man out at the plate. An incredible play by Paul LaDuca. He has been a rock. But after striking out Weaver, Maine walks Aaron Miles, and then he walks Duncan. So the bases are loaded for Albert Pujols again. 3-1 game, John Maine. This is a key point in the game, obviously, and you got to be kidding, right? That's a grand slam home run. The fifth career grand slam for Pujols. It's a 7-1 lead. He's driven in all seven at that point. After Ricky Lede pinch hit and walked, Reyes with a fly ball to shallow left center. No man's land. Duncan can't come up with it. So the Mets are in business. Leduca singled, then Carlos Beltran. Back to the pitcher. Check out Weaver. The soft underhand toss. They get one, but they don't get two. It's only one out in the inning. So the bases are loaded, and Carlos Delgado steps up to the plate. Three and one to Delgado. Carlos Delgado digs in. He's driven in five. Pujols driven in seven. His 400th career home run, the 42nd player ever to reach that mark. How about Guillermo Mota? He is in, making his Mets debut. Mota strikes out former Met Preston Wilson. And then Belliard swinging. So Mota gets out of the inning unscathed. Bottom of the sixth after Andy Chavez reached on a bunt single and a Woodward walk. Jose Valentin does his job, gets the bunt down, and Jose Reyes, ground ball, great play by Belliard. He gets Reyes. One run comes in. Keeps it in the infield. Could have been a tie game, but it's not. Seventh inning. Pedro Feliciano walked two batters. So Chad Bradford's in. He faces Albert Pujols, and he gets him. 6-4-3. That is a huge play in this game, as you'll see in just a bit. Enter Braden Looper. They're saying, we love you, Braden. A chorus of, really, it was booze, but Looper gets through the eighth protects the one-run Cardinals lead. Into the bottom of the ninth, another former Met, Jason Isringhausen, on to close. Leduca keeps this game going with a single to center field. He stays at first on the miscue by Taguchi. The tying run on base, the potential winning run is out. Carlos Beltran, number 36 on the season, and the Mets win it. Carlos Beltran. A battle of potential MVPs. Beltron has the last word. The Mets win it in dramatic fashion, 8-7. to seven. They come back to beat the Cardinals. Entertainment value, you cannot beat it. Albert Pujols, seven RBIs. Carlos Delgado, five RBIs. Carlos Beltron, two RBIs. It's the ninth time this season that the two Carloses have homered in the same game. And how about more on Delgado now? We told you about the 400 home runs in his career. He now has 11 grand slams. And this season, 14 of his home runs, with two tonight, have come at Shea. 17 of them have come on the road. Albert Pujols, clearly the story as far as the Cardinals are concerned. He surpasses the 100 RBI mark for the season. That is six straight years now of 100 or more. He's reached the century mark every year. 
he has been in the league. That is absolutely amazing. Now, coming into tonight's game, Albert Pujols was hitless against the Mets this year. He made up for lost time, shellacking John Mean. That was the three-run home run in the fourth inning that went the other way. Just amazing power. Then a few innings later, really it's the next inning, fifth inning, with the bases loaded. Albert Pujols does it again. He is a one-man wrecking crew. In all, 38 home runs, 105 RBIs for one of the top candidates for MVP. So John Main now knows what dozens of other pitchers already know. If you make a mistake or two against Albert, he will make you pay, and the ERA can skyrocket. Main suffers uh, his worst outing since the All-Star break, no doubt. Five innings, seven runs. His ERA goes from 2.68 to 3.58. But you know what? The pen comes in, and as they have done all year long, they have come through. Don't forget about Chad Bradford with an amazing, uh, an amazing at bat against Albert Pujols to induce the double play. Clearly, a key at bat in this game. All right. Now, aside from the game, the Mets incredibly busy today. With all that, they trade for Sean Green. It's official. The 33-year-old, along with Cash, comes from the Diamondbacks to New York in exchange for minor league lefty Evan McLean. So outfield help is on the way. It's been thin. Nady was traded. Cliff Floyd is injured. Green is set to make $9.5 million next year. And there's an option for 08 in which he can earn $10 million, and there's a $2 million buyout on that option. So Sean Green on his way to the Mets, and he brings these numbers to the big city. 11 homers, 51 RBIs. This is a month-by-month -month breakdown. Now, way back when, Green was a star with the Blue Jays and the Dodgers. Three seasons with 40 or more home runs, four seasons with 100 RBIs or more. Sean Green, officially a member of the New York Mets. Still ahead on Nissan Post Game Live, we go back out to Shea. We talk to Ron and Keith. There are a few topics may, we may want to get to. We'll bring you high highlights from around the league as well. And Willie Randolph checks in with his post game press conference. It's all coming your way on Nissan Post Game Live. So, Joe, are you ready for the press? Yeah, I can handle them. They're not so bad. Well, you know how tough those guys would be after a game. Yeah, Willie, but I've learned one thing over the last 10 years. You just have to give them what they want. Hey, Joe, great job tonight. You get them next time. Thanks yeah, for the thanks. Subway sandwich. Hey, you're the best, Joe. You can't win them all. How'd you know I like my toast? Give them what they want, huh, Joe? Now, get what you want with Subway Restaurant's Play of the Day. Enjoy a regular six-inch sandwich for only $2.99 each. Try all seven. Subway. Eat fresh. Geico Sports Night on Sportsnet New York. The news and information source for all New York area sports fans. Three shows a night. The destination for the latest news on every area team. Geico Sports Night covers the stories that New York sports fans care about. Our reporters and anchors will deliver to you live from Studio 51 at Rockefeller Center West. If it happens in New York, it happens on Geico Sports Night. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night. Only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Back here on Nissan Post Game Live, we're in Midtown Manhattan. We go out to Shea now where Keith and Ron are standing by after just a fantastic game. Tough to beat entertainment-wise, guys. And, boy, you talked a lot about this MVP race. If you guys had a vote right now, who are you voting for? <laughs> well, we still got five weeks. So you're to get <laughs> no, you don't. Now. Right now. <laughs> I think they both made a statement tonight. I mean, obviously, uh, with, with Beltron, the game winner, I mean, with, but uh, Pujols with the seven RBIs, the grand slam, the two bombs, I think it's a dead heat. Well, I think I think I think at Beltron's a little bit ahead just because of the Mets and their mastery in their division. I think that helps him be a little bit ahead of Pujols. But like Keith said, there's so much time left. There's a lot of at bats there for both Beltron, Pujols, Delgado. There's other people out there that have had a great season. Hey, uh, as far as Albert Pujols is concerned, Ron, in relation to John Maine, you know, you could look at this as this is a nice education for John Maine. He may very well face these guys in the postseason. Yeah, you don't want an education like that, though. <laughs> that was a beatdown. Uh, when you watch Pujols, if you don't make your pitches, of course, you're going to get beat. He's that strong. And I think the problem was not, not the home runs as much against Pujols, because those are bad enough. But, you know, he certainly didn't want to walk Miles and 
Duncan in front of Pujols. You just can't do that kind of thing. You want to face Pujols as many times in the game as you can without runners on base. Hey, Keith, uh, Sean Green, you guys know you talked about it uh, during the game. Sean Green's on the way. He's a Met. What does he have left, and what can he offer this team at this stage in his career, 33 years old? Well, 33, you're kind of on the your your uh, your prime is your last year of your prime, really. 33 years of age, so he still he keeps himself in good shape. Maybe this will rejuvenate him, put him right with the team in first place. Uh, more importantly, we talked during the game, guys, is that you know three, four, and five in the order is set. It's going to be the switch hitting. Beltron, the left-hand hitting Delgado, a right-hand hitter behind the left-hand hitting Delgado in right, and now we got a left-hander in the mm. sixth position that's going to get behind right for the Floyd out, and that's why I think this trade was made. He got a little left-hand hitter behind David Wright now to protect him. And uh, you mentioned Delgado in that little grouping there in the mm. middle of the Mets order. Uh, from a hitter's perspective, Keith, and then Ron, from a pitcher's perspective, put 400 home runs into some type of something for us so we have a sense of, of how good Delgado really is. Well, for, there's not too many guys the uh, last time I looked that hit 400 <laughs> home runs in a career. That's a great milestone. You know, he, he's struggled here, but all good hitters, the cream comes to the top in this game. That's the one beauty of baseball in a 162-game schedule. The cream comes at the top, whether it's an individual or a team. And Delgado now has got his stroke back. I think he's out of this slump, and I think he's going to have a terrific finish. And to tell you from a uh, pitcher's perspective is that you love the history of the game when guys do it year after year after year. That's the kind of player that Carlos Delgado is. When you go into a season, at the end of the year, he's going to have 30-plus and close to 100 RBI. So those are the guys that are attractive to a team, a guy who has to hit in the middle of the lineup, which is a tough place to hit, that he's consistent year in and year out, and that's Delgado. And, the, and now he's right on the cusp of playing in the postseason for the first time, so this has got to be an exciting time for Carlos Delgado. Hey, uh, Chad Bradford, guys, no one's going to talk about this, but what a job he did again getting pull holes with men on. I mean, this guy is just has ice water in his veins this season. Yeah, he does. He has nerves to steal. Every time he comes in with runners on base, he has the ability to pitch out of the jams. And how does he do it? Because I, th I think he stays focused. I think he does not uh, get nervous. He just tries to execute his pitches. Against Pools tonight, he was not afraid to throw that first pitch right down Broadway, strike one. Then he came in with the sinker, which you have to do against Albert to try to time up inside. It worked effectively getting the double play. But Bradford, who got two double plays tonight, has been doing this all season long. And don't forget, too, the defensive play out there by Michael Tucker and Jose Reyes and LaDuca in the mm -hmm. fifth inning. Right before the grand slam to, uh, to uh, that, that, that pull hole, hit that's a run that scores if you if you miss a cutoff man or you botch that play and this is why and you cut off that run it's a tie ball game that run scores and maybe they win uh, they score more runs from that so that's kind of the, the the little things the Mets have done all year and that's why they're running away with this division a few hours ago Tom Glavin was the lead story a lot's mm. happened since then but how about some thoughts on uh, on the news on Glavin he will be back and what that can do for a clubhouse well, I still think he is the story, right, Matt and, and, and Keith, and I think are just happy. I mean, sometimes stories become more than a baseball story. They become a, you know, a family story because, you know, I'm certainly not only Tom, but his family was worried about the outcome of these angiograms and these hospital tests. So, you know, the happy for the Glavin family and, of course, the Met family are happy that they're going to have Tom Glavin back in that rotation. Well put. Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll see you uh, in SNY. Mets coverage continues tomorrow night with Game 2 of this Cardinals-Mets series. They have a tough act to follow. Nissan Post Game Live continues after a break. When we come back, more on tonight's thrilling finish at Shea, Carlos Beltran, the hero among heroes. Tomorrow, it's Game 2 of Mets Cardinals as the Amazons battle it out with Albert Pujols, Jim Edmonds, and the Cards as their series continues at Shea. Mets, Cardinals, Norfolk Bank pregame live begins tomorrow at 6.30, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Mets Weekly on Sportsnet New York, the show in the network that gives you the inside look at the New York Mets every single week of the year. It's hit in the air to deep right center field, and it's out of here! From the action during the season to the hot stove in the winter, the Mets will be front and center all year long. Mets Weekly, new episodes every Saturday at 1230 on Sportsnet New York. 
Welcome back to Nissan Post Game Live. More on the Mets and Cardinals in a thrilling game in just a bit. But first, a quick peek at what's coming up on Geico Sports Night. We check in with our friend Steve Berthume. Hello. It's always good to have friends, Matt. Thank you very much. A much more reaction from Shea coming up. We will break down the Sean Green trade as well and have the details on the best news of the day for the Mets, the health of Tom Glavin. We'll hear from the Mets pitcher and look at the leading candidates to take his rotation spot while he's recuperating. And the Jets restructuring Curtis Martin's contract. Is this the end of the road for 28 in Gang Green? All of that and much more coming up later on Geico Sports Night. Right now, back to Nissan Post Game Live, starring Matt Yellow. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Thank you, Steve. We look forward to that. We move on now to the American League. Lots to do in the Central. It's the White Sox and Tigers. Maglio Ordonez right up the middle. Nefi Perez comes in, the newly acquired Nefi Perez. It's 1-0 Tigers. Bottom third, 2-0 Tigers. One on. Marcus Timms is the man. Marcus Timms unloads deep to center field. And that is deep to center field. That's a huge park. Carlos Guillen comes in. It's 3-0 Tigers. Bottom five, same score. Tim's at the plate again, and this time, this time he's doing himself a couple better. It's a home run. His 22nd of the year, 4-0 Tigers, and that's how it ends. 4-0 Tigers over the White Sox. So that central division, they continue, they continue to uh, play on there and Try to catch one another. How about the Twins and the Orioles? The Twins still very much in this picture. Nick Markakis also in the picture. That's his first home run of the day. That's the first inning. Bottom of the third, Nick Markakis. That is his second home run of the game. It's a solo shot. Baltimore is up 3-1 to one on the Twins. Move to the bottom fifth, and it's Nick Markakis, and you got it. That's another one, his third home run of the game, his first career three-run home game, or first career three home run game. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Orioles take it by a score of 6-3. to three. So, as far as the standings are concerned, the AL Central on top, the White Sox and Twins battling it out for second place, and that also means they're battling it out for the wild card situation, and you see the Red Sox there three and a half back right now. National League. Reds and Astros. We know the Astros have pitching, right? Scott Hatterberg, the homer to center field. It's a three-run homer, and the Reds are up 4 nothing. But we know that the Astros pitching is certainly stellar. David Ross, the RBI double to right center. That scores Adam Dunn. It started an eight-run inning for the Reds. So maybe that pitching wasn't there this evening. Bottom third, 7 nothing Reds. Edwin Encarnacion. He's at the plate, and Kyle Loesch, Scott Hatterberg, come on down. It's a 9-0 game. The Reds will not go away. The next batter is Adam Dunn. Adam Dunn. When you're talking Adam Dunn, you're talking liftoff. And there it goes, number 38 on the year, a three-run home run, and the Reds shellack the Astros 14-0. So they pick up ground on the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's a look at it right now. NL Central, and it's a good one. One game back. How about that? The Reds on the heels of the Cardinals, and the Reds also lead the NL wild card by two and a half over the Padres. The Phillies, three back, playing without Aaron Rowan for most likely the rest of the regular season. Down on the farm. How about it? This is how the Mets fared. Tides at Charlotte postponed. Uh, the Bees, the Binghamton Mets, beat Portland 7 6, and the Cyclones lose again at Hudson Valley. So the Cyclones are in a little bit of a tailspin as the season hits the uh, the final quarter of the schedule. Nissan Post Game Live continues after a break. You'll hear from Willie Randolph when we come back. Nissan play of the game, the last play of the game. Carlos Beltran, the game-winning two-run home run, the first pitch he sees from Jason Isringhausen, gone, Gary Cohen, Screaming at the top of his lungs as the Mets win it. You saw it here on SNY, number 36 on the year. The Mets take it 8-7 to seven against the Cardinals in game one of this three-game series. The upcoming schedule looks like this. Game two of the series, you'll see it here. Coverage begins at 6.30 with North Fork Bank pregame live. Steve Traxel takes the ball on Wednesday. And how about this? He's 10-1 since the beginning of June. 10-1. His line rarely wows you, but winning is what counts, and he has done that consistently for the better part of this summer. And this, this graphic coming up here shows you exactly how effective Traxel has been since June 1st. 
his numbers against the stats of the other four pitch uh, pitchers who have accounted for most of the starts. I mean, it just blows them away in terms of wins. Orlando Hernandez is the only other guy with a record over 500. Here is the skipper, Willie Randolph, following Traxel's last start. He's doing a very consistent job, you know, going out there and, um, you know, giving us what he's got every every time out. And, you know, we, we supported him a lot, but he's been very efficient. And, uh, you know, you, you like to get a good, solid start every time a guy goes out. But like you said, he's been as consistent as anyone. So he's done a nice job for us. I don't really listen to what anybody else says. So, you know, I know what my teammates say, and that's the most important thing for me. Um, you know, coaches are all... You know, happy with how I've been throwing. I'm happy with how I'm throwing, and that's that's what's important. All right, that was Traxel a few days ago, and this is how it stacks up for tomorrow. Mark Mulder will be making his first major league start since June 20th. He's been on the DL with a rotator cuff and shoulder injury. Now, before tonight's game, the Mets announced that Tom Glavin will be back in the rotation soon, seven to ten days. He will not require surgery on his left shoulder as an angiogram revealed that scar tissue from an old injury caused that coldness or that coolness in his left ring finger. According to doctors, this condition is not serious. Here's Tom Glavin late this afternoon. I mean, I'm relieved, you know, there's still um, a little bit of anxiety, I guess, for going through what I've gone through for the last few days and, and the uncertainty of it. But, you know, it's uh, certainly a great feeling knowing that I can go out there and continue to pitch and, um, you know, get back on the field as soon as I can. So, I mean, from that standpoint, it's great. And, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, Hopefully from here on out there'll be no more problems. I guess the time frame right now more than anything else is giving giving my artery a chance to heal. You know, I mean they want you to be real careful with that where they where they poke a hole in your artery. So um, you know, that's the biggest caution right now is is giving that forty eight hours of doing nothing and, and letting it heal and then beyond that, um, you know, it's whatever whatever Dr. Alchek says at the timetable that I can get out and start throwing again, I mean I'll probably need a couple side sessions to get ready and then once I get out there and pitch you know I don't feel like physically I've lost a whole lot or, or that um, you know I need to be on a strict pitch count or anything like that I think it's going to be pretty much status quo but obviously they'll, they'll keep a closer eye where I've where I've missed some time. All right, that was Tom Glavin earlier today. We take another break on Nissan Post Game Live. When we come back, you'll hear from Willie Randolph as his club takes game one of this series against the Cardinals in dramatic fashion. Don't go away. To get your sports net New York on the web, make your homepage SNY.TV, the online home of all things New York sports. Real-time news, scores, team pages, exclusive video, blogs, message boards, and more. Your link to every local sports section. Your link to every single New York team. Pre-game, post-game, every game. A site dedicated to you, the New York sports fan. If you want your SNY online, bookmark SNY.TV. Get your New York sports online here. Let's take it 8-7 to seven against the Cardinals. They moved to 28 games over 500. They have now rattled off nine straight wins at Shea Stadium. Here's Willie Randolph addressing the media at Shea just a few moments ago. Wow, what a ball game, huh? What do you think, Chris? Nice ball game? You like that? You like that? What do you think? Ten walk-offs this year so far. Hey, that's, that's sweet. a little while, though. That's okay. It's a perfect timing for me. About time for the start again. Carlos nice. Delgado officially out of the, out of the slump he's been in. Ah, uh, no, a good good hitters, you know, they never really go into slumps. They just every once in a while they're unlucky. That's why I look at it, you know, because when you're a great hitter like that, you know, you're gonna have your days where you just hit the ball hard at someone. Sometimes you're a little bit out of sync, but uh, I'm just not a believer in slumps. I don't believe in that. That's just a word they throw at you when when you don't get hits, you know. But uh, you know, he's a human being and. Uh, Every once in a while, you get out in front. You know, it's all that technical stuff that we talk about in the clubhouse. But he's such a great hitter that you know, they, they just he just they just get away with it for a while with them. Pitchers do, but when it's time to come up big, he does. And uh, I hope that um, can do that for a long time. He's, he's he's one of the best hitters in the game and 400 home runs. You know, I guarantee you'll get 500 before it's all over and more. So. Big, big ball game for him and, and Carlos coming through. CB coming through with the, uh, the big game winner. Fun stuff. Lots of good things today, huh? one right after the other. From Tommy to Sean to winning the game. Yeah, well, you know, we're on the field and, uh, you know, we kept playing, we kept, you know, battling, you know, getting behind early. But uh, the, the character and the attitude of this ball club is that, you know, we never give up, we just keep playing the game and, uh, 
you know, just uh, you can feel it. It's just a nice feeling to know that uh, these guys are very confident about what they do. And, you know, we're playing against a good ball club. And, uh, you know, Johnny didn't have a big game tonight. He made mistakes to the wrong guy. You don't want to pull Holtz Beach. And, uh, you know, he made some bad pitches at the, bat at the wrong time. And so, but we picked him up. That's what good teams do. So, nice, nice win overall. Great win. What happened to the New York Mets Stoic uh, manager? Stoic? Yes. Well, you know. I guess I'm a chameleon. I, mean, I can change every once in a while. You know, <laughs> that's okay. You know, I like, to, I like to keep you guessing. You know, I, I, I think I'm still pretty stoic. You know, I'd look pretty, at it. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's been on Green for a long time. I've seen him play for a long time. Yeah. What, what does he give you, and how do you how do you plan to use him? Where in the order and that type of thing? Well, he's going to be my right fielder. Um, he's a solid player. Watched him play a lot of years with Toronto, and uh, uh, you know, good defensive ball player. You know. Not a guy that can hit lefties and righties. He's just a solid all-around player. I haven't seen him play consistently for a couple of years. Uh, he's probably not having a typical Sean Green year, but you know, maybe a nice little change of scenery would be good for him. Uh, he's hit around uh, Laduca and Delgado, and, and, a, and a really solid ball club, obviously. So that can sometimes can uh, get you kickstarted or whatever. So he's he's a, he's a solid guy all the way around. Good in the clubhouse. Uh, I've always admired his approach uh, as a left-handed hitter. He's not a a pure power hitter, but he like, likes to hit the ball the other way, which is a uh, part of what we like to do. So, outstanding pickup by Omar, and I think he's going to fit in real nice for this. Real like nice. Him <clears throat> we'll think about it overnight. We have some options, and he, he's, he's flexible in a lot of different ways. Um, so we'll see. I'll think about it. Willie might get overlooked, but how important was Bradford getting close on that double play? It was huge. I mean, he's been outstanding all year long. Give him the ball, and he comes in and just goes right at you and makes quality pitches, and that's why we got him. He's, he's there for the big boys like Pujols, and uh, he came in and ran the slider, or ran the sinker in on his fist a little bit, and an outstanding pitch. So he's been one of the real unsung heroes uh, on our ball club all year, and um, never hesitate, hesitate to give him the ball. He's done a great job. How pleased were you that you were able to take one of the major leagues' best players, best shot, and still able to come back tonight? Well, we have to take everyone's shot. It doesn't matter who it is. You know, we need to just continue to uh, keep fighting and playing. I mean, uh, it's just nice to be able to come back from a uh, deficit like that. It really doesn't mean anything to me about who it is. Uh, the Cardinals are an excellent ball club, but uh, we were able to get in their bullpen. And we got some big, big blows from uh, some quality players. So, Did you notice any reaction in the dugout when they made the announcement about the trade? Uh, no, not really. We, we stayed pretty focused. Um, I know sometimes when you're down low like that, I don't know if you totally hear it, but there was no reaction really. So I don't know. I heard it because I was on top step, uh, but uh, didn't quite understand that. But um, you know, it's okay. We we refocus real quick. You know, get the guys that heard it anyway. You joked around, Marty, about being stoic and all, but you said before the game, you know, you're excited. You just haven't shown it a lot. Finally tonight, you get a rare chance to show. <laughs> Am I excited? I'm not really excited. Am I excited to you? Am I? I don't. I'm, I don't think I am. I'm just <laughs> smile every once in a while. But uh, no, I, I feel good all the time. Man. I really do. I think everyone's got perception is just way out there. You guys just don't know me. But uh, uh, you know, hey, that's okay. I'm not here to uh, win any popularity contests. I'm here to help win ball games. And uh, the people that know me, like Marty, know that I'm a. Uh, a little weird, you know, a little crazy, you know, and all that stuff. Those so, uh, yeah, well, that's okay, man, because I, I laugh because people think they know, and it's real funny because uh, people that know me you know I'm totally opposite of what uh, people might think. But the, to me, it's not important. It's, it's all about uh, having fun, doing what I'm doing, and uh, winning ball games. Uh, I think people should care less, the, you know, <laughs> how I come across because um, uh, the bottom line is uh, getting the job done, don't you think? You know? All right. right, you just smile more yourself too, man. You know, yeah, you should. Smile anymore? They think there's something wrong with you. Really? There's something wrong with you. You ask me questions about how I feel. You know? Willie, I know you're focused on team goals and everything, but did Carlos Beltran one up? Paul Holtz as great a player he is in the MVP race. I mean, in your mind, is Beltran the National League MVP? Right uh, well, for me, you know, uh, you, you love your players and what they do for you because you see them every day and, and you like uh, how they go about their business. I mean, Pujols is an outstanding player and you put numbers together. You know, I'm not always a numbers guy. It's what you mean to your ball club. So that's the definition of MVP for me. But I'm just a little bit biased and I have to say that Carlos had a tremendous year and he has to finish up strong. We have a, you know, a long way to go. So this thing's probably going to get real interesting at the end. Uh, you know, a lot of respect for Pujols, but Beltran is my MVP, that's for sure.
talk earlier, getting back to John Main, despite his troubles tonight, are you still satisfied overall with his production this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, you make a couple of bad pitches, and um, you, 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 you know, you pay for it. That's that's the bottom line. But yeah, he's done an outstanding job for us. We can't just react to one game, and um, he'll he'll bounce back. He'll be okay. I mean, it would be a little bit weird if if he went out every game and just threw up goose eggs all the time. That wouldn't be too realistic. So uh, he's entitled to uh, a stinker every once in a while, but he'll bounce back. He'll be all right. A jovial William Randolph talking to the media a few minutes ago, and he has reason to be happy. The Mets win. They acquire Sean Green to play right field, and Tom Glavin is coming back sooner than later. Geico Sports Night has details on all of this. It's coming up on SNY after a break. That's all for Nissan Post Game Live. Carlos Beltran wins it with a walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth. The Mets beat the Cardinals. You saw it here. We'll see you tomorrow with North Fork Bank pregame. Geico Sports Night is next. Enjoy. Clubhouse, Mets Kids Clubhouse opens its doors and it's where the kids rule the show. Learn about baseball and all your favorite New York Mets. We'll take the players from the clubhouse and right into your house. Every week you know where you'll find us in the Mets Kids Clubhouse. Saturdays at noon only on Sportsnet New York. This is Billy Wagner and you're watching Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Hey there, welcome to the broadcast. It's Geico Sports Night here from our Sportsnet New York studios in Midtown Manhattan. Steve Berthume alongside Brian Custer. There is much Mets news tonight. Yeah, Tom Glavin will be back on the mound soon, and the Mets have a new right fielder. You know, for weeks, it has been a rumor. Tonight, it's a done deal. The Mets have sent minor league pitcher Evan McClain to the Arizona Diamondbacks. In return, they get Sean Green and Cash. Green will bring another big bat and some experience to the right field position, especially with Cliff Floyd constantly on the DL in left. And rookie Lastings Millage has just struggled at both corner outfield positions. Green will give the Mets stability at right field because Willie Randolph loves using Indy Chavez off the bench. He's 33, two-time All-Star, hitting 283 with 11 home runs, 51 RBIs this season. Lately, he's been splitting time with Arizona rookie Carlos Quentin. He's an expensive addition, making $8 million this year, $9.5 million next year. Keith Hernandez, your thoughts on Green. 33, you're kind of on the, you're, you're about, you're, you're, your prime is, your last year of your prime, really, 33 years of age. So he still, he keeps himself in good shape. Maybe this will rejuvenate him, put him right with the team in first place. Uh, more importantly, we talked during the game, guys, is that, you know, three, four, and five in the order is set. It's going to be the switch hitting Beltron, the left hand hitting Delgado, a right hand hitter behind the left hand hitting Delgado and right. And now we got a left hander in the sixth position that's going to get behind right, put Floyd out. And that's why I think this trade was made. He got a little left hand hitter behind David Wright now to protect him. All right, here's a look at what Green has done each month this season. You can see the production has dropped every month since June. As I said earlier, that's in large part because he's been splitting some time with the rookie in Arizona who's been called up lately. Here's Omar Minaya just moments ago. And we are uh, happy to announce uh, that we've made a trade today. Uh, we've acquired uh, Sean Green from the Arizona Diamondback uh, for uh, a left-handed pitcher, uh, Evan McLean um, and Cash. Basically, the Diamondbacks have given us Cash uh, and uh, Sean Green, and uh, we've traded them uh, Evan McLean. Uh, we are very happy to add uh, Sean Green uh, to our club, uh, to our lineup. Um, he's been a guy that I kind of have watched over the years, have liked over the years. Uh, well, back when he was in uh, Toronto uh, with the Dodgers. And I think that, uh, you know, adding him to our club um, from an offensive standpoint uh, improves our club offensively. Um, he's, uh, he's the kind of player uh, that f I think will fit into what we are trying to accomplish here, um, not only with his, uh, the ability to make contact, uh, the ability to get on base, uh, the ability to play the game both ways. Uh, so we're happy to have him. 
So Sean Green is on his way. Meanwhile, Tom Glavin's condition is not as serious as feared. An angiogram yesterday determined the cold sensation Glavin had experienced in his left ring finger was not caused by a new or serious condition, rather by an old injury to an artery that occasionally causes blood clots. Glavin will be treated with simple baby aspirin and other blood thinning medications. After a couple of days of rest to allow the incision from the angiogram to heal up, Glavin will be allowed to resume throwing. I mean, I'm relieved, you know, there's still um, a little bit of anxiety, I guess, for going through what I've gone through for the last few days and, and the uncertainty of it. But, you know, it's uh, certainly a great feeling knowing that I can go out there and continue to pitch and, um, you know, get back on the field as soon as I can. So, I mean, from that standpoint, it's great. And, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully from here on out, there'll be no more problems. Concerned about him, obviously, but I don't... Uh lose any sleep over things I can't control so it uh, deal with things when you have to deal with them and uh, like I said when you get into the ballpark and you get good news like that it's always a positive thing so uh, I wasn't concerned going in and um, glad I didn't waste a lot of energy sweating it. We got good news today so we're very happy with the news uh, you know last Sunday at least when I was sitting down here on Sunday uh, we were not only um, you know fearful and scared for Tommy's uh, you know his health uh, but you know, pitching aside, we didn't, we didn't think that, at least I didn't think he was, it was going to be out for the whole year, uh, but I thought it would definitely be a couple of, of weeks, and we got great news yesterday, uh, actually, you know, today, but, you know, it's been, it's great, you know, to have, be able to, Tommy be able to pitch. We believe in ourselves, and we know that, uh, that uh, we're going to go through ups and downs, and we're going to have some tough times. Uh, we've had a nice year so far, but I don't think there's anyone that believes that it's always going to be that way, so. I'm always positive with my guys and optimistic. I believe in them. They know I believe in them. So, you know, we just pick up and move on. But in this case, this is, you know, great news because, you know, Tommy's one of my best pitchers and uh, we need him. We need him uh, to help uh, continue this run. It's very good to be able to have a guy like Tommy <coughs> Glavin, uh, you know, um, able to pitch for you as we go into September, you know, late August and September. And uh, hopefully uh, this team will get to the playoff and have him, to be av have him available, hopefully, if we get into the playoffs. Well, doctors think the original injury to Glavin's artery was probably caused by pitching, and the scar tissue from that old injury is what caused the new problem. No decision yet from the Mets on who will take Glavin's next scheduled start. How about the game? Cardinals-Mets from Shea. This was fantastic. Hey, President Bill Clinton, the former president of the house. <laughs> Jeff Weaver struggling this season. ERA over five. Bottom of the first. Weaver getting some help, though. Jose Reyes, fly ball to left. But look at Chris Duncan coming in, flashing some leather. Weaver, former Yankee great, loving it. Bottom of the second now, Carlos Delgado Del got it. His 10th consecutive season with at least 30 home runs, it's one nothing Mets. More from him later. John Main looking to get over that 500 mark. He's been fantastic in his last four starts. Top of the fourth, Duncan. Rips a double to right. Cardinals with runners at second and third. And then it's Albert Pujols. Home run, 37th of the year to the fifth now. Ronnie Belliard on first. Yadier Molina rips a double to left. Michael Tucker throws it in to Jose Reyes. Reyes guns it to Paula Duca. And look at that. He nails Belliard at home. Another look. Great catch. Great tag by LaDuca. After striking out Weaver. Maine walks Miles on five pitches. Then he walks Duncan. So the base is loaded for Fat Albert. He's one for two against Maine in the game and uh, gone. Fifth career grand slam for him. St. Louis takes a 7-1 lead. He's single-handedly doing in the Mets. Bottom of the fifth now. Base is loaded for Carlos Beltran. Hits it to Weaver, but look at the little girly throw to home. There's just one out. They could have turned a double play. So that means here comes Carlos Delgado. 3-1 to Delgado. And he goes with that.
That grand slam put the Mets within two. He's the 42nd player to hit 400 home runs. New Meg, Guillermo Moda making his debut, top of the six. Runner on second, Moda strikes out Preston Wilson. Then gets Belliard swinging. Moda getting out of the inning unscathed to the six now. Indy Chavez, the bunt single, then Chris Woodward. The walk, Jose Valentin does his job, puts down the sacrifice. Next batter, Reyes. Puts one in the hole, but Belliard, look at the fantastic grab and throw. Chavez scores, it's 7-6 to the seventh now. Pedro Feliciano walk two, Chad Bradford comes in. He's just been money. He faces Pujols, gets him to ground into the 6-4-3 double play. The Mets get out of trouble, and here comes Jason Isringhausen, the former Met. Bottom of the ninth, one out, Laduca on first. Carlos Beltran, be a hero. His 36th home run of the year, and the Mets come from behind in walk-off fashion to win 8-7. to seven. The Mets have now won 10 games in walk-off fashion, trumping Pujols' seven RBIs tonight. Carlos Delgado now has 400 career home runs. His second home run, of course, his 11th grand slam of his career, the team's ninth of the season. That's a club record. It's the first time the Mets have come back from six runs to win a game. Here's Chris Cotter with the hero of the game, Carlos Beltran. Carlos, 10th time you guys have won it uh, in the last at bat. You guys never stop believing you can get it done, do you? Well, our team is a team that we're never going to quit. You know, no matter how far we are in the game, we're going to try to come back. And I just want to thank my Lord for letting me come through in that particular at bat. You know, we win today's ball game. It's always great every time you win the first game out of the series. Seven to one, though, you guys were trailing in this game, and uh, it was a pool hole show. You guys uh, put a stop to that, though. Well, he's a dangerous hitter. You know, that's why he's one of the best. You know, every time he connects the ball, he's almost home run all, all the time. So, you know, he hit the grand slam, a home run with two guys on. So, but like I say, you know, we were able to come back and we win this one. Isringhausen's one of the best closers in the game. Take me through that at bat. Well, in that particular at bat, I know his best pitch is a quarter. So I was trying to, you know, step a little bit away from the plate. And uh, he threw me one right in the middle of the plate and I was able to, you know, hit it. And as soon as I hit it, I know it was going to be out of the ballpark. So I was very happy about it. All right, thanks, Carlos. Thank you. And thank you, gentlemen. All right, game two of this series tomorrow night. Can it be any better? Mark Mulder told the rubber for the Cardinals. Mulder must hate New York because he's 1-5 in five with a 9.09 ERA between Shea and Yankee Stadium. And the Mets will send out Steve Traxel. You know, he's tied with the team lead in wins. And just how hot has Traxel's been? Well, since June 9th, Trax 10-1. That's the major's best winning span during that time. Well, the news isn't all good. Ron Castro's season may be over. He injured his left knee, warming up for a rehab stint with Brooklyn before last night's game against Staten Island. An MRI showed Castro has a torn meniscus and a grade one strain of his MCL. That is not good news. Well, Curtis Martin was absent from Jets camp today for personal reasons. He's also restructured his contract. Obviously, the Jets really want Martin to recover from that knee injury because generally a team will cut a player when he's facing a situation like this, but that would be a PR nightmare for the Jets. Martin will now make just the league minimum of $800,000, and if he's placed on injured reserve, he'll get paid just $475,000. If Martin comes back healthy enough to play, he can recruit his $2.5 million salary through incentives. Curtis is working as hard as he can to get back as quickly as he can. And uh, Curtis's approach has always been uh, outstanding in everything that he does. And, you know, there's really no change in his status. He's, uh, he's taking the same approach, and we're taking the same approach, and we're going to get him out there as quickly as we, we possibly can. You know, I'm, I'm always optimistic about anybody that, that has the work ethic that Curtis has or the work ethic that a lot of these guys have shown in the rehab process and if guys work at it there's a good program in place um, you know the key thing is to get back as quickly as possible all right martin hasn't been on the field since many camp back in june even then you can see the knee was still a problem for him marshall falk well he's taking the year off because of a knee injury he was on daily news live earlier today talking about curtis martin 
we really don't know exactly what it is or how bad his knee is or, or the severity of it. So we can't write him off as a yet um, until he comes out and makes the statement that he's bone on bone and he can't play and he can't do X, Y, and Z. We have to give the guy the benefit of the doubt because he's a warrior. He's giving you guys everything that he's had. So let's not just, you know, and, and I'm trying to help you guys out. Let's not just say he's done. You know, let's, let's, let's let him make that decision. All right, Jets Giants will play the third preseason game against each other Friday at the Meadowlands. You can watch an encore of the game right here on SNY Friday night at 11 o'clock. Yeah, speaking of Jets Giants, we'll find out how long Eli Manning will play in that game Friday night. You'll hear from some of the G-men coming up. Yeah, that's right. We've got that and, of course, a whole lot more from Giants camp here on Geico Sports Night on SNY. Get to Shea the easy way. Take the train to the game. The Long Island Railroad from Penn Station or Woodside stops right at Shea with easy connections to the rest of Long Island and New Jersey Transit. The number seven subway conveniently serves Times Square, Grand Central's Metro North trains from Westchester and Connecticut, as well as service from Port Authority Bus Terminal. Mass Transit is easier and faster. Get on board at Mets.com. The team, the time, the way to Shea. Sunday on Inside Jets Camp. We'll have a complete wrap-up of the Jets-Giants preseason Big Apple battle. Also, see how newly acquired Kevin Barlow fits into the running back mix. And more surprise camp performers. Inside Jets Camp, Sunday at 7, only on Sportsnet New York. Giants have their annual preseason meeting with the Jets Friday at Giants Stadium. Tom Coughlin said today Eli Manning will likely play at least one half and maybe even longer. Jared Lorenzen will be the second QB because, as Coughlin said, it's his turn. Giants had one practice this evening and just one more two-hour workout tomorrow morning, and then they break camp in Albany. The discussion today was Friday's game with the Jets. You know, I guess the, it's for the fans and the hype of it, but you know what? It's, it's a game. We got treated like a game, and definitely want to come up on top at the end of the game and win. The Jets are a revamped team. Um, you know, I've, I've been playing them for the last nine years, so I know the things that they can do. Uh, I, I know the, the intensity that they bring. And then, you know, you got two New York New York City teams, so it's going to be a dogfight. Even if they score some points or, or they do some things that are, are good for, for the Jets, we still want to improve on what it is that we're building. And, and this game, more so than any other preseason game is is that game to do that. It's a, it's a very vital and a very important game to, to be a part of. Well, at the beginning of Giants camp, Michael Jennings was a long shot to make the squad, but he opened some eyes when he ran a punt back for a touchdown in the first preseason game. If his speed doesn't catch your eye, the gold grill on his car and his mouth will. Here's SNY Sialfa Lewis with more. At NFL camps across the country, you'll see shiny cars with big wheels and nice sound systems, but not too many like this. Say hello to Michael Jennings, the guy with the big smile and bigger car. It's a 95 Caprice Classic Chevrolet. It's got a LT1 motor Corvette engine in now. I'm from Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida, you know what I'm talking about? So we just, you know what I'm saying, down south we ride big, you know what I'm saying? See who can ride the biggest. I'm sitting on 26 inch wheels. That's how we do down in Duval. I'm a country boy, so that's how we ride. Don't let the exteriors fool you, though. Despite the flashy car and the gold fronts, Jennings is deeply religious and very well-grounded. He earned a degree from Florida State in sports management, he loves to talk about his family, and insists that somehow, some way, he will make it onto an NFL roster. Part of the reason Jennings is so determined and insistent is because of how he got here. Jennings played football in high school, but his grades prevented him from playing big-time college football. Since he graduated in 2002, he's been cut by five NFL teams. He's been on three practice squads, including the Giants last season, and is determined more than ever to take advantage of this opportunity in this camp this year. And this is returnable low. Jennings from zone 42. It's a speed version. Jennings just to beat the punter. Jennings 
gets tripped. Jennings maintains his feet. Jennings will score. One of the Giants' most impressive plays this preseason was Jennings' 57-yard punt return against the Ravens on August 11th, a play that helped win the game and may have earned Jennings a spot on the roster. Man, I think that was really could have been the biggest thing that I ever did. Really, that's how I can tell it wasn't really by me. It was at the Lord and the Lord's time, you know what I'm saying, because it was time we were down. We needed a, we needed like a a, 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 a spark of energy, a big play. LT1, LT1, baby. Nice. All right. <laughs> Hanging around Jennings, you can't help but smile. His happy-go-lucky attitude is infectious. His southern drawl, warm. His work ethic, such as working on his pass catching after every practice, is admirable. You get the feeling that whatever happens, whether Jennings makes the Giants 53-man roster or not, he'll be fine. He'll persevere and he'll be smiling, driving on his big wheels. In Albany, Seattle Lewis, Sportsnet, New York. All right, nice whip. Terrell Owens may have another MRI as the Cowboys try and figure out just what's wrong with that hammy even after weeks of treatment and mispractices. Jerry Jones says he's not sure if T.O. will be on the field when the Cowboys return to practice tomorrow, which means Owens may also miss Dallas's game against the 49ers Saturday. All right, still to come on Geico Sports tonight, both the Mets, Yankees could face the wild card winners in the playoffs. We'll check out both of those races coming up next. And we'll check in on a rough year for the Phillies, Aaron Rowan. This guy can't catch a break, although he did last night, literally. You're watching Geico Sports Night here on SNY. They gave you the Beijing cocktail. Just cutting off your adrenaline. If you stop, you die. Juice man. Clear. You'll do whatever it takes to keep it up. Jason Statham, Amy Smart. Crank. Rated R. In theaters everywhere September 1st. And Nady hits one in the air to right center field. Going back is Rowan. Warning track near the wall. And he has it in his glove. And he hangs on. Oh, my. An incredible God. play by Aaron Rowan. That is an enormous play, saving three runs. Aaron Rowan with the play of the year. Yeah, as you can see, Rowan is just one of those guys who goes all out after every fly ball to center. He's a manager's dream, a fan favorite, and a regular on the DL because of it. Last night, another example. Take a look. Rowan fractured his ankle and will be out four to six weeks after colliding with his teammate Chase Utley and Wrigley last night. Philly's initial concern was his neck. You can see he landed awkwardly on his head. Chase Utley wasn't injured. Rowan had to be helped off the field. He's back on the 15-day DL, and now the Phillies say he'll be out for the rest of the year with a fractured left ankle. Now, to replace Rowan on the roster, Phillies got veteran infielder, outfielder Jose Hernandez from the Pirates in exchange for some cash. All right, let's check the NL wild card now. The Reds and the Astros today. Bottom two, this is former Red Sox great Scott Hatterberg, and that's a home run, a three-run shot. 4 nothing Cincinnati in the second inning. In the third, David Ross to right center. They'll wave Adam Dunn. This part of an eight-run Cincinnati third RBI double for Ross. Continuing in the inning, it's 7-0. Edwin Encarnacion. He knocks one in there. Kyle Lowe scores. Hatterberg comes in as well. It's 9-0 Cincinnati. They've scored nine times. Next up, Adam Dunn. And you know where this is going. Exactly. 38th for Dunn. This is literally out of the stadium. Hello. Three-run homer. Reds 14-0 over Houston. So the Reds win, and the Mets help their cause by beating St. Louis tonight. So the Reds creeping up to the NL Central. This is the wild card now where they lead San Diego by two and a half and the Phillies by three. Blue Jays manager John Gibbons admitted overreacting last night when he scuffled with pitcher Ted Lilly during Toronto's 12-10 loss to Oakland. Gibbons came out to the mound to pull Lilly out of the game during a seven-run A's third. The two had what appeared to be a profane confrontation on the mound. 
before Lilly finally left for the dugout. Then the manager and pitcher got into some kind of a skirmish in the tunnel leading to the Jays clubhouse. One witness was reported as saying Gibbons just went at him. It looked like Gibbons grabbed him and they disappeared. It was mayhem down the tunnel. This is the mound and you can see, well, just don't read the yeah, lips. Don't read lips yeah. now. Come They're on. about to go, go to blows there and then they finally do apparently, or at least some sort of altercation in the tunnel there. And there you see Lilly and Gibbons follows him. Uh, Gibbons reportedly had a bloody nose, although Lilly said there were no punches thrown, so I don't think John had a bloody nose, but there you go. White Sox Tigers, bottom one, Maglio Ordonez. Here's Mags, base hit, Nafi Perez comes in, one nothing Detroit. In control in the AL Central. Bottom three, although this is a big series for the White Sox, they got to have every one of these games. Marcus Timms, deep center, Carlos Guinel scores. Timms motoring all the way to third. Triple and Detroit at home. They need these games. It's 3 0. Bottom five. Tim's one more time is 22nd of the season. That made it 4 0 Tigers and the Tigers in a game they had to have. Get it 4 0. Mark Burley loses. He's 10 and 11 on the year. The Gambler, the winner. How about the Twins Orioles? Nick Markakis was the man today. In the first, Markakis yard. One nothing birds and oh did he have a day. We go to the bottom of the third, 2-1 Orioles, Markakis comes calling again. Second homer of the game, another solo shot. Baltimore up 3-1. So we go